Uh, so hello everyone, welcome, welcome to, to the annual general meeting uh, of Agami 2020. Uh, so I will, I am just coordinating <laughs> and helping with the flow of the meeting, but uh, I will start with uh, the, if you can see the agenda, the first item is the welcome by the board chair, uh, Abu Hassan. So Hassan Bhai, uh, if you are ready, I'm gonna pass it on to you and I'm gonna stop sharing. Do you have any slides that you want to? No, uh, I, I don't have any slides. So you can keep it uh, on uh, Nisa if you want or. Okay, yeah, I, I'll leave it on if you, if you yeah. don't have any slide. All right. Uh, I'm not going to use any slides. Okay, so uh, thanks, Nisar. Thanks for putting it together for us. We really appreciate the help. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Agami's uh, annual general meeting 2020. Uh, I think uh, nobody's dialing in from Bangladesh. I assume it will be uh, pretty early in the morning, but in case uh, if anyone is, then you know, good morning to you guys as well. Shabaike, uh, Agamir. Barshik Shadharun Shabhai, that's the Asian. Barshik Shadharun Shabhai, Shagatum. So with that, uh, let me say a few words about uh, AGM. AGM is a very important governance function for most of the organizations and definitely uh, for Agami. Uh, we have been doing it usually during the first half of the following year, right? If it is 2019, then you would do it the first half of 2020, so on and so forth. But obviously uh, this year, everything is upended by, uh, by the uh, pandemic. So the uh, AGM has also been pushed out quite a bit. We're almost uh, towards the end of the year, right, uh, Q4. And also another significant change is this is for the first time we are doing the uh, AGM completely virtual. It used to be a mix of people sitting somewhere uh, in the Bay Area in uh, California, and then people dialing in from other places. But this this year, obviously, we are we are uh, sitting on Zoom to uh, to do a virtual AGM for the first time. <coughs> the other significant thing is the uh, election. Right? No, I'm not talking about the uh, U.S. presidential election. That's that's uh, too much fun. I'm talking about uh, Agami's uh, board election. Um, three, you know, board members. In fact, all of the board member positions are open uh, for election this year. So you will hear the uh, election results from the election commission in a few minutes. But as I said, you know, before we go into that, I'd like to uh, touch on what is AGM, right? What what we uh, what do we achieve? Usually, uh, there are two components, right? We look back into the year that we have just finished reflection of, uh, of ourselves. And then also we'd like to share uh, what is ahead for Agami, right? It's future, the plans and so on and so forth. So with that, I would like to share my few thoughts for the, uh, the incoming board as to what is ahead for us, you know, what is future. And uh, you know, some of you have been around for forever like me and uh, some of you are new. But for everyone, I'd like to share that number of years ago, Agami has decided to, to separate the uh, execution function and the governance function, right? So the execution function is supposed to be uh, led by the president um, with the execution uh, executive committee. And on the other hand, obviously, you know, with support uh, and uh, guidance from the board. And the board is supposed to uh, look ahead, you know, the strategies, the future and where Agami should go. So that's the idea. But you know, my observation uh, being at the helm of it for the last few years is that uh, with the organization growing in different fronts, we are bogged down with the day to day. And you know, I, I completely understand why it is. I have been you know, part of that journey. As I said, as the organization grows, uh, we have to deal with the, the problem in hand, right? You know, could be crisis, could be a tactical issue and whatnot. So that takes the, uh, the center stage. And as a result, the, the longer term thing, the strategy, the future um, has to wait, right? And it's okay if it waits uh, a little bit, but if that becomes the norm, waiting becomes the norm, uh, that can impact the organization in the long term. So, so that would be, you know, as I said, one observation and one caution 
for, for the incoming board. Uh, together with that, another important topic is uh, the, the, the challenge of scaling. I think you know, we collectively as an organization are um, facing with this you know, issue of scaling and scaling from multiple fronts. You know, so we are you know, growing as an organization, but you know, uh, do we need to scale our funds? Do we need to scale our revenues? Do we need to touch more students versus you know, a few thousand students that we are touching right now? Um, and things like this. You know? And again, the, another uh, aspect to it is um, incre um, growing incrementally, 10%, 20% year over year versus X-factor growth. I call it X-factor growth, right? If we want to grow the organization 2X, 3X, 4X, clearly uh, we need a different type of approach, different type of thinking, strategy, and execution. And again, I'm not saying this way or that way, but collectively we have to decide, does Agami or should Agami stay as a, you know, a quarter million dollar organization? Or do we want to take it to a million dollar organization in three to five years? And if we decide to go this way or versus that way, there clearly needs to be a strategy and plan put in place to do it. And uh, the third thing and finally is that we need to make sure that we are committed to our core values of the organization, right? Agami is, uh, has been created and stands on very strong foundational pillars, like we believe in education, right? Our focus is education and more specifically, education for the underprivileged. So we need to make sure that whatever we do, we do not go after the shiny object because somebody else is doing it or because it's cool. We need to stay committed to that you know, foundational goal of Agami as well as you know, other values like you know, secular as an organization, a political and so on and so forth. So these are some of the things I'd like to draw attention to the incoming board uh, around AGM. So with that, um, I'd like to stop. And uh, if there is any quick question, I'll take it. Otherwise, I'll hand it back to, uh, hand it back to Nisa. Uh, with that, uh, if I may can add something to the core value, Hassan Bhai, who says Agami is a very secular and very non-political organization. So everybody is very clear about that. Yeah, I touched on it. So maybe I went too quick. So I said, yes, you know, after uh, underprivileged education, secular as well as a political are our foundational pillars. Thank you. Anything else? Thank, from thank you, Hassan Bhai. Um, I think we... Yeah, go ahead. If, if Hassan Bhai seems to be entertaining questions. If anybody has any question, feel free to ask right now, or you can hold your question until the open discussion item. That's end of the, uh, after all the presentations are made. You can always, oh, Hassan Bay, I think you are going to leave, right? So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I have to drop out, but that's okay, Nisar. It's not a problem. So, if I, I'll, I'll let, uh, if there is any burning question based on what Hassan Bay mentioned, please go ahead so that, that uh, uh, because Hassan Bay is leaving, so this is your opportunity. All right, looks All right. like uh, there is no question. Thank you, Hassan Bhai. Um, I am going to now uh, give the stage or the platform to Mustafiz Bhai, the other um, board member who is going to report on, from the board's perspective, Agami's activities um, till this meeting uh, over the last year or so. So Mustafa is why I'm going to stop sharing so that you can uh, share your screen, okay? And hand it okay. to you. Okay, Th thank you, Nisar. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, so yeah, let me first try sharing the screen and then we will get started. Okay, is that visible now? Not yet. See it now? No, most no, not yet. 
Okay, I, let me see what's going on. Uh, you, sir, if you have the file, you can even bring it up, right? Yeah, I, I, I will, if uh, most of it's fine itself. Oh, there you go. Coming up, most of it's fine. Did it? Yep. Okay, so now, is it in full screen? I think yeah. you have a slideshow. Yeah. Okay. Should I put it in slideshow? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. That's good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Thanks for uh, uh, bearing with me. Um, yeah, so I think, uh, as uh, as uh, Ms. Arana mentioned, I'm going to give some board updates. But uh, before I start, I wanted to uh, pause and uh, recognize that we are uh, in the middle of mid midst of an unprecedented pandemic, which has, uh, you know, claimed the lives of uh, like right now, probably over a million people worldwide and over 210,000 people in the U.S. and untold misery and, uh, you know, economic, uh, both, you know, physical as well as economic uh, worldwide and particularly for the very underprivileged children of Bangladesh. So I think uh, pause for a second before I uh, I get into uh, the board updates for this AGM and that and as Hassan pointed out, this is one of the reasons why we're having a virtual meeting. Uh, you know, but I think uh, this is probably for the better. I think this is a, a much uh, better uh, method or a platform for holding our meeting. Uh, so I think, uh, um, as you know, the, the current board, the current outgoing board comprises of uh, three members, three board members, um, you know, myself, Hassan, who has been gracious enough to act as the, as the chairperson of the board, uh, and, and Nisa. So those are the three boards. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the Agami board function is supposed to be uh, overall governance, policies, setting strategic directions, et cetera. But as you will find out, and as Hassan uh, hinted, or you know, explicitly mentioned that, uh, you know, the board has had to uh, participate in a lot of uh, execution related act, uh, activities. And I'm gonna enumerate some of that as well as talk a little bit about the COVID-19 specific uh, relief effort that we put in because it was a new and un, uh, unplanned activity. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the items that we have set out that certain things that we needed to improve, uh, you know, that we said in the last AGM, which I think was also held a little late in September of last year, and uh, what we need to do, uh, at least some of the things that we need to do going forward or continue to do improve on going forward. Uh, with respect to governance activities, uh, you know, the, the one of the first important tasks that the board has to do is uh, and nominate a president, and the president is actually but the bylaws are nominated for a year. And, uh, you know, we renominated Babu as the president and worked with him in the formation and approval of the executive committee. But in spite of all of our best efforts, there were some, uh, some critical positions that were unfulfilled or, or, or unfilled or needed needed to be filled because the previous person had the personal constraints. And uh, so we did help, uh, we, we are happy to report that uh, Stephen Perez uh, joined as director of finance and eventually the board also approved the formation of a new position for direct analytics uh, that Parvez, uh, you know, took on uh, to utilize and use the, the CRM and all the related analytics activities. Um, and you will see in the next slide uh, that, uh, you know, uh, how we did, we created, uh, if you recall, those of you who attended last year's presentation, Rick will recall that we all created an office of the president, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And uh, some of these other activities, I think, will go over a little bit in a high level. Uh, the other important thing we reported in the last AGM was uh, Agami, for the first time, decided to hire a general manager at AEF and Shomiron was hired to run all aspects of AEF operations, including uh, the school and KV program. And, uh, you know, we continue to 
work with uh, you know we meaning to, to the uh, through the president of uh, of, uh, of Agami uh, because he reports to the president of AEF but also dollar line to to the president of Agami uh, with guidance from the AEFEC. Uh, so uh, we continue to support uh, Shomiron so that we can grow into this desired plan of one general manager for the organization or governance and the executive committee can provide guidance on policy matters and other strategic initiatives. Uh, next, uh, uh, you know, last year we uh, created the office of president and divvied up some of the tasks between the president and uh, some of the board members. And uh, I think we, I think overall, I'm going to go and get to the bottom line. Overall, it, it did help the workload distribution. Uh, the president's job is a very, uh, it's a long list of tasks, the way uh, it's uh, for all the execution related activities, uh, both the uh, short tactical as well as strategic and coordination amongst various chapters, as well as our, our feet on the ground uh, AEM. Um, and, uh, you know, because of limitations of bandwidth, this was what was requested. Uh, by uh, the Babu denominated president and we had divided things up. And I think for the most part, things went pretty well, uh, you know, uh, but Babu focused on the budget and uh, YFR sync up budget, though it sounds like a single line item, but of course it's a very long, uh, you know, including school program, KB program, and so many other stuff about the AEF and uh, particularly in AEF with various PPIs coming on board. Uh, for myself, the KB program really didn't need a lot of uh, attention or participation, uh, but then as the unprecedented COVID hit us, uh, when Tassin, uh, who was as ANEC president, he uh, called, he led the COVID-19 re relief effort from here by working closely with AEF and uh, from the board, I uh, was happy to participate and work with them and provide the guidance. Uh, Hassan, uh, of course, had the responsibilities are taken on both the YFR 2019, as well as we are making sure that we are able to get donation receipts in a timely manner. Uh, but additionally, he also led, among other things, the 2020 annual fundraising effort. As you all know, that we were there's been a smashing success and set the new bar. Uh, and Nisar, you know, had this uh, very uh, uh, interesting, I will say, job of. Uh, you know, bugging a lot of people and getting everyone to uh, to provide all the material that we need to do as part of an organization, publishing an annual report and, and holding the AGM. Uh, he was able to actually not get one annual report, but two annual reports done both for 2018 and 2019. Okay, and as you can see, we are here holding the AGM. So, uh, so good job overall, I think. So I'm just going to touch a quickly upon the COVID-19, uh, the relief efforts. Uh, as soon as uh, you know uh, the, the 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 coronavirus hit uh, or the all parts of the world, including Bangladesh, uh, the country was uh, you know going into a complete lockdown. Uh, lockdown. Uh, recognizing the the need and uh, particularly for underprivileged children and their families who are losing their income and basically daily sustenance. Uh, you know, Tassin, along with a few other leaders and volunteers uh, at Agami, uh, you know, decided to take on the responsibility of providing immediate help and relief to uh, to Agami's children and their families. Uh, and, uh, and working with uh, Mo, they launched this what was called the Together We Give, Together We Live program. And as you can see, the their goal was basically how to make sure that they survive. They live there to be so that Agami will have children, at least these children that we have invested in over the years, to be able to continue to get the quality children that we strive to provide. Uh, you know, and also to be able to give them some level of access to medical consultation should that be needed. And then if we can survive and get over the hump, then to be able to see how we can continue to do education in a place where they don't have internet, et cetera. But it was, you know, it was full of challenges. Uh, our kids do, are not in one school or two or three locations only. They're distributed they're all across the country, in many cases, remote areas of the country that you know. Uh, when a country is going through into a lockdown, 
procurement and transportation of daily essentials, which were becoming scarce, is not easy. And doing the distribution of all of this stuff in by maintaining a social distance and the safety protocols is no easy matter. And at the same time, when so many organizations were rushing to raise funds for a good cause to make sure folks, uh, you know, are able to at least, you know, get basic food and basic essentials of life, you know, would we be able to raise adequate funds and make a meaningful difference? Uh, you know, I'm getting to the bottom line. I think we were very, very successful thanks to the, you know, outstanding effort uh, and, and huge commitment, you know, led by Tassin uh, and participated by folks in AEF against all odds. We raised overall, uh, you know, at about $100,000, about 65K in North America or outside of Bangladesh and about 35K in Bangladesh. Uh, you know, thanks to a lot of uh, CSR grants, et cetera, that we, you know, aggressively pursued in Bangladesh. And this allowed you know, from across all most of the schools that were were, uh, were enrolled, uh, over 3,000 families, we were able to get them uh, the food not once but multiple times. And it was not just providing the food essentials, but we were also able to get them trained on the various health protocols that are needed. And that's why we also focused on you know, soaps and masks and things of that nature in addition to providing food. Uh, and it was not just the children and their families. We also realized that the teachers also needed help because a lot of the schools were, where the teachers' salaries are paid out of tuition, tuition wasn't being paid. So we also, wherever we determined was necessary, okay, we also provided assistance to the teachers so they didn't lose their income and as consequently, their, their families did not suffer. Uh, and again, I think that in the school program, you'll hear more about what other methods were taken with respect to once things stabilized, how we could continue to impart some education to the, to the children, okay? Uh, and just like here in the US in the Bay Area, uh, a COVID-19 protocol was also established to, that could be followed for school reopening. So uh, it took a little bit of time there, uh, but I'm going to go over some of the other things. Uh, you know, the major the major activities that the board participated in was uh, the YFR 2019 after the AGM in the November, late November, December timeframe. Again, Farhana did an outstanding job of leading this and with a, with a very well thought out theme, give me a good mother. And uh, we again had a record raising of 65K of funds uh, you know, as part of this effort. I think all of you have, uh, have, have uh, you know, witnessed something, uh, you know, unique that we established this year. Uh, you know, Hassan led the effort for this first time virtual fundraising effort. And, uh, you know, all across the chapters here at EEF, uh, you, know, you know, everybody pitched in. And, uh, you know, we had an outstanding, successful and entertaining event lasting five plus hours. I mean, I, I, still, I still get goosebumps from this. And we absolutely exceeded the 100K fundraising effort, which, uh, you know, we, we we'd never done this before. We'd never done this before. And more importantly to me, I know from my, uh, you know, all, from all my networks, we successfully reached a very well, wide worldwide audience in North America, Australia, Bangladesh, Middle East, wherever, you know, all, all aspects, you know, East Coast, uh, you know, folks were up till 3 a.m. in the morning. There are people who are big donors from the East Coast, but, you know, they've never seen Agami event. Okay, they've only heard about it. This time they saw it live. Just, just outstanding. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot, you know, we, we have set the new, new bar with respect to holding uh, you know, an entertaining one live, you know, real-time live event. Um, I think school program, you're going to hear from Tanzim and Sarah. Overall, uh, we, we went through a very diligent process. Uh, I think we're supporting still in the 3,000-ish kind of uh, kids, and that's something we need to think about going in the future. 
Uh, this year it's been about 14 different schools. Uh, we continued 10 from the previous years, added four new schools, which was good, and, and discontinued three, three schools from the previous one. Uh, overall, we dispersed our, our, our in the midst of dispersing 120K in two tranches, which includes also there, we have a couple of donor directed schools, but conforming to Agami, uh, you know, principles and methods of education. Um, I think on the KB program, Sheila Ardiluba will talk about the programs, but I think this was again in response to the COVID situation in Bangladesh, uh, a new opportunity. Uh, presented itself to Agami, and uh, and you will you will hear that we have been we have been we are working with the Ministry of Education uh, to develop, record, and broadcast educational video. This is over and beyond the KB videos, but highly leveraging our knowledge and experience with that for this remote and distant learning via the broadcast TV channel Chantok TV. Uh, this is uh, really. Uh, this is uh, again a, a, an opportunity that has presented that presented uh, to Agami itself to Agami, and we seized the opportunity and are executing very well. Um, uh, the the relatively new initiatives and focus areas, uh, you know, I, I think we reported last year that we are the last AGM that we were going to start using Neon, and we successfully did uh, generate all the donation receipts using Neon in a timely manner and and more importantly, or equally importantly, uh, we know, uh, with, uh, with the correct accuracy. Uh, I think uh, there's there's probably a lot of other things, maybe Babu will touch, touch upon it in his presentation, but I understand that many of the marketing campaigns are also driven from NEON now. Uh, this will bear, I think, give us a lot more visibility uh, into, the, into the donor base or the volunteer base, et cetera, as we go forward. Uh, the, the, the other uh, relatively new initiative, the newsletter initiative, uh, again, is, uh, is going very strong. Uh, I think as many of you have, who have had taken the time to read it, you'll see it's a very detailed, informative newsletter that's being published uh, every quarter, including um, in, during the pandemic for almost the last two years. Um, I should probably have uh, talked about it, uh, you know, at the end, but this is a uh, uh, this is an extra cast that we had this uh, this year, uh, you know, you know, for however, however, it happened three years ago, uh, all three uh, members of the board had to be elected. And uh, as a result, three years later, now we are in a situation where we had to hold an election to fill all three positions of the board. And uh, one of the responsibilities of the board is to form an election commission uh, to conduct the elections. So Imtiaz, and uh, and who's a, who's an oil, you know veteran of Agami, um, you know, and was a point and Marine, uh, relatively new from the Carolinas, uh, they were uh, they 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 formed the election commission, and you will hear from them how the, what process they followed, and uh, and and what the results were. Um, but this was also accompanied. We wanted to make it as much participatory as possible. Uh, by a membership drive prior to uh, leading up to the election, I think four, six, eight weeks before, to encourage participation and proactive engagement with Agami teachers. Uh, I think one of the key items that uh, that uh, Agami has uh, realized and undertaken is uh, are two things: both uh, registration of AE, AEF as a domestic NGO, and registration of Agami Incorporated as a foreign NGO. Um, that we start, we went with the AEF stuff first, and uh, you know, Shomiran of AEF, the general manager of AEF, has been driving this effort with active support from Shibnath in at AEF, and many others, including uh, Nisar and Tasi uh, from uh, Agami, are helping the process. Uh, we did not get approval the first go around, uh, but we were not cited any reasons for that. Uh, but since then. Uh, by getting feedback and comments officially or unofficially, uh, we have now filed the uh, we filed the application with along the supporting documents, and <clears throat> the effort is going on in full swing, even though we are in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, so, uh, more importantly, the registration of Agami Incorporated as foreign NGO needs to happen. This will actually allow Agami to be. 
uh, to have to have uh, all its um, you know all the activity that needs to do under its own control and uh, this is also needed for scaling the agave activities as i mentioned in a controlled and, uh, and predictable manner uh, i was uh, leading this effort uh, but we decided to put this on hold a couple of reasons uh, not all due to the pandemic but uh, we also consciously once the first round of application of the AEF and uh, application didn't go through we wanted to use the learnings from the AEF domestic NGO effort so that we could apply and utilize that and leverage that as we file our uh, foreign NGO application uh, but make no mistake this is a very high priority task for Agami in and, and definitely the new board uh, and it will and, and we will you know, as soon as uh, the domestic, we have some pretty good idea about the domestic NGO application, we will uh, we will go very aggressively on the foreign NGO application as well. So now I come almost towards the end of this. I think the, the first half of this slide shows the areas that we said uh, we had identified as uh, as new as areas for improvement uh, from the 2019 AGM. Uh, as you can see, the filing application for as a foreign NGO, we did not do that. So it is it is a it needs to be carried over and aggressively pursued uh, in, the, in the coming term. Uh, with respect to issuing accurate donation, we did a good job with by utilizing Neon. Uh, I think we also did much better and did a reasonably good job with respect to improving Agami budget, particularly school program budget and uh, and KB budget in a timely manner. I'm sure we can do better, just like any other organization can. Um, I think recruitment and retention, this is again, as part of scaling the organization, this is a key item. This is where, you know, we would need to make a lot of investment. Uh, I think we have made some progress, uh, particularly I, I see more progress in, uh, in, uh, in the chapters uh, of, you know, uh, Basin, as well as the folks in ASEC and Carolinas are making a good progress uh, recruiting uh, volunteers. I think we not only need to recruit, retain, but also get them engaged. And more importantly, they need to grow to leadership positions. And, uh, and you know, they, they will be the future of Uh Tax filing was also a sore point and uh, but we were able to file it, but uh, given the pandemic and whatever else, there were glitches, more we think at IRS, but it is, seems to be under control right now. Uh, revamping Agami website, we do have an owner. Uh, and I think, uh, I'm sure we will do a lot of good work to make it a very, uh, you know, interactive, somebody who can enjoy, who lands on this website to, to you know, to have fun with it and be eager to try to look at what Agami has to offer. Um, one of the goals that Agami over as a policy, we need to get to a point where we can entertain or do an audit. And that requires a lot of processes. I think we have done, made some improvements in this area, but I think we will continue to improve so that, we, and by taking a target date when we can do uh, at least, uh, you know, the, the first step towards an audit. Um, so the areas where we will continue to do, do uh, improve in the coming year and term uh, are some of the areas that, that we haven't completed or done well. So including filing the application for foreign NGO, uh, trying to continue to grow volunteers to leadership positions, uh, improve productivity at, uh, at Agami with Neon, uh, re, you know, revamping the website, and uh, continue to improve it, uh, communication within and with AES and do that in a timely manner. I think, uh, I think I have reached the end of what, the slides and I wanted to thank all of you for your attention and for your patiently listening to it. Uh, I think we will, uh, Nisar probably would like questions to be, uh, to be handled in the open discussion. So I will then defer to that and I think uh, should I be in, uh, introducing, uh, uh, you know, the election commission? Yes, ma yes, ma okay. Ma uh, so I think, as you heard, the we, you know, the election commission was uh, was chartered to uh, the, to hold the, the elections for three open positions of uh, the board of directors. Uh, I 
I think uh, MTRs is not available today for, uh, you know, due to whatever constraints or uh, things that we had, but uh, Mehreen is. So I'm going to invite Mehreen to, uh, to take over at this time and uh, talk about uh, the, the election. And I will stop sh sharing the screen um, if in case she needs to do anything. Stop share. And, uh, I found Mustafa's by by it's um it's all right. Can you guys hear me correctly? Clearly? I yes. can, yes. no problem. Wonderful. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Mehreen Munawar, and I had the honor of serving as the election commission along with Imtiaz Chaudhary this year. And uh Imtiaz could not be present today, and he sends his regrets. And before I begin, I wanted to take the opportunity to say that um, everybody I see on in attendance today are just names that I hear from the side of the Carolinas. So it is um, wonderful to be able to put some faces with the names. So hi, everybody. I know you can't see me, but I can see you guys. And it's wonderful to see you all. Hey, all right, so. The video also? <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, probably, it's probably for everybody's best. <laughs> All right, um, so we were as the election committee responsible for conducting the ele elections for the new board of directors this year and also ensuring that the election process is done fairly and unbiasedly. I'm sure pretty much everybody has seen the emails calling for nominations for these esteemed positions and also the criteria and procedures for who's and the how's. Um, I'm going to try and keep this short and uh, summarize what the process was. Each nominee um, that was nominated by somebody had to be seconded by one other Agami member. We reached out to the applicable nominees for their intent to run for the board positions. And once they confirmed, the election was to be held and the three highest voted would then be given the honor to serve as the new board of directors of Agami Corporation for the next three years. Now the new members of the board are then presented with the responsibility to select a chairperson to serve for a year. But, you know, all that sounds too easy for 2020, right? So we were thrown some curveballs, and you will hear more about that in a bit. And under unprecedented circumstances and guidance of the bylaws, we were able to fill two of the three positions. And I know that the audience is probably bursting with questions, but please hold on to them. I promise they'll be answered soon. So I'm pleased to announce that we have in our midst today the two leaders who will guide us in this amazing cause. We certainly hope that as the election committee, and I speak on behalf of MTS here today, um, we hope that we did our job well and serve as we were intended to. So without further ado, I would like to announce the new board of directors as of October 2020. Please welcome to leadership, Mr. Tassin Rof and Mr. Mustafi Chaudhary. Mr. Tassin Rof has been involved with Agami since 2017 and has made significant contributions to this cause. While new to serve on the board, Mr. Tassin is no stranger to leadership. He's an electrical engineer by trade and has over 20 years of experience in leading software development and data governance for Fortune 500 companies. He brings a very fresh perspective and, and, and initiative. And Mr. Mustafi is no stranger to us all he has been involved with Agami from the Bay Area for over 10 years. He has served on the board before, and in addition to the governance tasks, has actively participated in Agami's fundraising events and year-end fundraising drives. Mr. Mustafiz, as you have all heard, has also been key in driving Agami's foreign and geo registration efforts. He brings to the table years of experience and wisdom. So please help me welcome them and wish them with our support and trust that they will drive us further than ever before. That's all from the election committee. Mustafa Spai, back to you. Okay, I, I think Mustafa I Spai, are you there? Can yeah. we do a virtual clap? Yeah, I did. <laughs> we, we, it's only shit. There you go. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I think, uh, uh, Nisar, maybe you, you can take over at this time. 
Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Izwe. I, I'm just gonna quickly invite uh, Tassin uh, because he is the um, the freshest uh, board member. Um, Mr. Izwe has been there, so I would like to invite Tassin to um, accept and and uh, basically talk a little bit about the process going forward for the board because we have two board members elected we need still need the third board member. So Tassin, if you can um, give us uh, some, some thoughts on that. Yeah, sure. Thank you, uh, Mr. Bhai. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Good, mor good, good afternoon. Good morning, people from Bangladesh. Uh, so my name is Tassin. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank the uh, outgoing board members like Mr. Bhai, Mustafiz Bhai, uh, Hassan Bhai, including our president and founding mem member of Agami, uh, Babu Rahman, for doing a fantastic job of leading Agami uh, during this difficult time, especially through the biggest pandemic of the modern era. I mean, uh, if you look at this as a result, like, you know, today Agami is stronger than before. Um, it was also very encouraging to see nine nomination uh, by the Agami members uh, for the three upcoming board member position. Uh, it is kind of unprecedented. Uh, we never had this type of uh, nomination. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for various personal reason and commitment, uh, seven out of the nine nominees uh, decided not to accept the nomination. And that created a challenge for us to fill the third board member position. So the election commission, uh, Imtiaz, Marin, uh, the outgoing board members, Mustafiz Bhai, and Mr. Bhai, uh, you know, uh, Hassan Bhai, Babu Bhai, and uh, the new board members, uh, we consulted uh, the bylaws to get some guidance uh, because it was uncharted territory for Agami. And uh, based on our interpretation of the bylaws, uh, we collectively made some decision. Uh, and uh, the new board was tasked to fill the third board member position. Uh, to do our due diligence, uh, as a new board, uh, Mustafil Bhai and myself, we decided to follow a process to fill the third member position. Uh, first thing was that the third board member will be selected for a one year term, allowing for new election for that position a year later. Uh, the second was we're gonna approach uh, all the remaining nominees who declined for them to reconsider their decision. And uh, if they are going to be uh, more than one nominee who decides to uh, you know, become a board member, then that would be put to a vote by the vote, uh, you know, uh, remaining board members because there is only one position. And if that uh, does not provide an outcome, like if none of the nominees decided to reconsider, uh, we are going to request the existing or the outgoing board members, one of the board members, to stay on for at least a year for the continuation of the board. And in that time, uh, you know, uh, we will arrange election for the new, uh, to fill the uh, third position. Uh, so uh, basically, um, the, the, also in, the, in that time, we are going to work on the bylaws because the bylaws are, uh, you know, not uh, clear, uh, you know, we, because we never encountered this uh, situation. So we are going to work on amending the bylaws to make sure that in future, we can follow a due diligence process to uh, handle this scenario. So without any further delay, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, our uh, outgoing uh, board uh, chairperson, Mr. Hassan, uh, who graciously and kindly accepted uh, to be our uh, third board member for the new board. Uh, with the understanding that, uh, you know, uh, a year down the road, there will be an open election uh, for that position. So, um, and, and uh, to answer Nisar Bhai's question, I also uh, accept uh, the board member position. Uh, I would like to thank everyone uh, who uh, supported and trusted uh, me to uh, hold this role. It is a big responsibility and I'll try my best uh, to fulfill my duties. So uh, just, to, just in conclusion, uh, so the current board is comprised of uh, Dr. Abu Hassan, uh, Mustafiz Choudhury and myself. 
and will be serving uh, as a new board uh, for 2021. Uh, thank you. Back to you, Nisar Bhai. Thank you, uh, Hassan Bhai. Uh, uh, would you like to say anything? Given that you are you are um, accepting to stay on for a year. Uh, no, thoughts? not much really. Uh, I really uh, wanted to uh, take a break, if you like, uh, <laughs> because of personal reasons. Uh, but you know, Agami and me, we were together for the last seventeen years. So um, since there is a need, I decided to uh, change my mind. It will be tough for me, and it will be again, as I said, because of personal reasons. Um, but I had a discussion with the uh, the other two board members. Uh, I got their commitment that uh, we'll be able to pull it through for the year. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Hassan. Mustafa, any any thought as uh, uh, oh, thanks, also the no, thanks, incoming thanks. board member? Uh, not, not really. Thank, thanks to everyone. I think uh, this is a, you know, we, we have a, you know, Agamia has a lot of opportunities and a lot of uh, you know, things to grow and scale. And, uh, you know, we are very uh, grateful and thankful to, to uh, you know, for Tassin for stepping in and for Hassan to uh, continue in this role, uh, during which time we hope to be able to find and get other uh, younger, newer folks uh, to be excited and uh, step uh, step up, and uh, not only to the to the role on the board, but also many other uh, exciting opportunities within the country. So, uh, so thank you. I think uh, you know there's a fair amount of more exciting stuff on hand to hear at the AGM. Um, so I will uh, end at this point in time. So thank you. Thanks to everyone. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, thanks, uh, Marin, Tassin, uh, Hassan Bhai, Mustafiz Bhai. Um, I would now like to continue with our agenda, which the next item is up uh, for Babu Rahman to present the um, Agami's activity from an executive um, uh, committee's point of view. Thank you so much, Nisar. Can you see the slides? Yeah. Great. So first of all, uh, congratulations in order to the new board. Tassin, welcome aboard to a, it was gonna be a crazy ride. And uh, Musadai, Hassan, again, you know the ride. So congratulations again. Uh, I, I'm gonna spend the next few minutes, essentially sort of a high level report on what we've done. And it's the way I wanted to look at it was sort of a perspective in the last three years, my tenure, so sort of looking backwards and then looking forwards. And as any part of looking backwards, first of all, sincerely deep thanks to the uh, outgoing board. Hassan Bhai, Musa Bhai, Nisar. Um, I lean on you guys a lot to help me, Office of the President, et cetera, to help me spread the work and uh, trust your advice. So again, thank you so much for, for being there through thick and thin. Okay. As part of looking backwards, I'm going to run through a number of our sort of key sections within the EC group, and you can see them right here. Uh, marketing, finance, CRM, KB, school programs, ops, fundraising, grants, chapters, and AEF. It's not going to be a deep dive. Uh, there was already a lot of good uh, detailed co um, content provided by previous speakers but I will still go through and, and have the individual owners speak at some points. Uh, I won't spend much time here. This is the old chart. It's really more for a capturing of uh, the, the state of the organization uh, for full transparency. It's really here for basically a full deck. So you can look at this slide deck uh, offline, this page at least. All right, getting into some of the uh, individual sections, I'm going to do sort of do a quick high level. And then what I'm trying to do is essentially make an assessment of what I, how I think things went. And then I'll ask Mo to step in with a few words at the end. So during my tenure, I still remember trying to solicit Mo to step in. And at the beginning, I think Mo was busy with some exams and she was really, really swamped. And she politely demurred and said no. And, and I appreciate that you were busy, Mo. But I am so thankful that probably a couple of years ago, something Mo was able to step up. She finished her uh, exams 
and she has assumed uh, leadership in a, in a fantastic way. And we've gone from a marketing team that was maybe very loosely structured to what I would say is a much more well-staffed, well-structured and organized team. And again, Mo will talk a little bit more in detail around this, but we now have actually groups running social media, the website, as, as Mustafa talked about. Membership, CRM integration, we'll talk about that, and Marcom, marketing communication. These are functions that any successful organization has to start growing and nurturing. And thanks to, uh, to most leadership, we now have these in place and they're, they're growing. And then you can see the evidence of the, the impact by the success in the market team supporting the fundraisers, raising awareness, external communication, collateral. So we have now pretty good breadth of presence and, and I wanted to go back and reiterate, maybe Mo will touch upon it a little bit more, the growth of the website. It was in shambles. And if you look at it now, Faye has done a wonderful job working with Asin and Mo to just really bring it to life. So my assessment, and maybe I should have used the smiley faces that most of it that I used, but I'll say good shape. And I would like, uh, Mo, if you don't mind, maybe you can say a few words. Do you want me to go to the next slide? Hello, uh, this is Farhana Zaman Mo. Um, I think, you know, everyone calls me Mo now, so I usually <laughs> uh, <laughs> take that name. Um, yeah, it's true, actually. Um, um, I'm an accountant by profession, so marketing just comes as this creative process in uh, which I was not sure how to work on, but I think I have to thank each one of you for uh, leading that path for me because um, it was a new concept. I, I just did, I just actually found out while working on it that how much I love marketing because it has the creative process involved and things to do. Um, so fa going fast forward into 2020, uh, we have actually made major marketing changes. Um, we now have leads for each and every part of marketing. So we have basically, we have branched out our marketing dashboard into very smaller concepts. And we have a lead who's owning up to each and every concept. And the what, what delights me about it is that um, we have each of these things being covered. And um, the way I look at it, because one, uh, one person is responsible for one thing, they are actually recruiting their volunteers within this team and they are making progress like we are now have like for website, for social media, standard um, operating procedures established. We have more documentation to understand what kind of processes would lead to it. Um, so these are a few very important uh, initiatives that are happening at this point. And um, I believe that since we have seen this change in 2020, by 2021, I think we will see a better team of people, you know, executing the process through the established processes. Um, so coming to what the dashboard looks like, uh, the umbrella has website, which Fari has been leading. Um, she's done a wonderful uh, job of revamping the website, um, you know, making it more user friendly than it was. And um, she's building her own team. We have social media, which is being managed by Muzaffar, and he already has another three um, peers working with him under that team, uh, making social media communications. So what is happening at this point of time, and I think you may have noticed, especially with the Agami fundraiser, that we have had social media highlight every aspect of what's happening in each and every channel, that is YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, and Instagram. We're working on Twitter at this point, um, hoping that is the next thing, uh, Twitter and LinkedIn, which we're hoping will be the next things that we want to be on board with. Um, company matching, we're doing it pretty small, but what we have done is that we have gathered all the data for the Agami paid members, and we're trying to help them see if there is any kind of company matching happening, uh, which at this point, it's a pretty small project, so I'm taking care of it. But as soon as I find someone you know, who wants to work on it, um, I'm going to transit that process too. Uh, we have third party and partnerships. This is something, um, you know, again, I'm just taking care of it. Um, a few of these things we have discovered while we were working in the beginning of the year. I, I should thank Tasin uh, Bhaya because he actually got uh, me some information on uh, third party partnerships like Zakatify. And then we now have a PayPal giving fund. We have PayPal, we have uh, GoFund. 
we have quite a lot of sources from where we can actually leverage people to give us uh, donations. And at the same time, we, uh, we're promoting Agami's, um, you know, Agami under Smile. So you will see our emails now have a lot more content and we're trying to get, you know, these, um, we call them low hanging fruits that we can easily use to sort of get, you know, get back some benefit. So we're working on that as well. Uh, but of course, you know, that's not been a main target yet, but we, we have started recognizing stuff like that. Uh, membership, membership is actually, um, it's not really a complete marketing initiative. Uh, so it will probably move around based on how big it becomes. But at this point of time, um, Tahmeed, uh, he has graciously agreed to take up membership, which has actually been uh, pretty slow last year. And he's working on making sure that we have proper enrollment happening. We are trying to, we have actually drafted a letter that is going to be, you know, um, a sort of welcome letter from Neon every time some new person joins in. So we actually have something developing together that is um, for, uh, online, for enrolling for new members so that they feel welcomed, some profile about Agami so that membership team can communicate to new people. So I think, you know, that's a whole new project, but um, we're pretty excited about it because um, the, uh, members are actually getting to talk to somebody about membership. Um, fundraising and events that as usual, it's always um, been our most important thing of the year. And it'll again be, you know, the year end fundraiser is almost at the door. So that'll be again, something that we are going to be again, working on um, vigorously after October 15th. Um, a fundraising event this month, this year, our tagline is uh, basically uh, together we give, together we live. And we've actually been talking about it already. We would just try to make more digital content that is related to it. And again, all of these uh, you know, teams that I talked about here will be working with me together to um, raise, the, raise, raise for this year's fundraiser. Um, we have email marketing, which is a pretty new concept to us, um, uh, which is being led by Iftikhar Chaudhary. Uh, what we're doing here is that Neon is actually, um, you know, our new source of email blast. And we have been trying to promise that we will do more frequent email blasts than we used to do before. Uh, but at the same time, we wanted to make sure that these marketing emails have good content, good looks, and, um, and a lot of other stuff. So we have been doing kind of all the research we could do to make sure that our email marketing is a strong chain because, um, you know, from our research, we have found out that we have at least at least 10% of people um, in our database who actually are more email, um, they, they, they had rather loved email communications from us than, you know, social media or anything else. Um, and digital content is an ongoing process. Um, we, uh, I could say that all of us who's involved in this uh, umbrella is actually working on digital content, but I do most of it still now in terms of making sure that we're able to put whatever new events are coming up out in the open. So this is pretty much um, what Agami Marketing is doing at the moment. Um, you know, if, and like we said, we're asking people to come in, share ideas, give us more information. So that's pretty much it on Agami Marketing. Thank you. Thanks so much for a wonderful description of the breadth of work you're doing. Okay. So on the finance side, <clears throat> as Musa Zvai alluded to, we've had multiple qualified directors uh, under my tenure. Uh, Mamoon had to leave because of work. Uh, like his restrictions, but one of the things I wanted to tout is that he made significant improvements in our money transfer process. Uh, I think Shomiran, so congratulations, you're online. It's three, four o'clock in the morning for you, but you know, the money transfer used to take at least a month from leaving here, US, to landing in Bangladesh in the AEF office, at least a month. And uh, I know that my mom worked close to a Shomiran team to cut that down by at least 50%. So that was meaningful. And then after Mahmoud left, uh, Steve came on my a fun, wonderful addition, another trained financial executive. Uh, he brought significant rigor and, and process to our, to our accounting work and then management of all the external funding resources or sources like Benevity, Network for Good, et cetera. And then another really nice uh, piece of work is 
Steve's working with Barves to synchronize QuickBooks and our CRM tool. So this has been great. And then last but not least, um, I would say a meaningful advancement of our understanding and measurement of overhead. We've had a lot of subtleties to think about, especially since money leaves here, goes to Bangladesh, gets spent over there. So I would say Spiny Face Health is in good shape. And at this point, uh, Steve, if you're online, I'd like you to maybe say a few words, if you can, maybe about a minute, if you don't mind. Sure, I'd uh, love to. Thanks, Babu. Um, I don't have a big enough pipe to do video and audio at the same time, so I will stay with just audio. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and I in no way take credit for this because it is the result of labor that started a long time before I joined, but getting the year-end tax reporting right is critical. It's essential for a nonprofit to get this right. Um, it, it's uh, not something that is going to incent someone to donate with you. But if you get it wrong, you could certainly incent someone to donate their funds someplace else. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is uh, broadening the contribution channels. When I joined about two years ago, we basically had three channels, live text, PayPal, and Benevity. And now we have uh, the PayPal Giving Fund and Facebook, both of which are significant sources. We have Neon, we also have Bright Funds, we also have your cause. So those are um, very, very helpful. And it's impressive that we have a range of donations from $10 to tens of thousands of dollars. And I don't care how wealthy an individual is, for a person to make a donation of the five to $10,000 range is a significant vote of confidence in Agami. Um, and we should all be proud of that. So now we find ourselves in the process of starting the budget for 2021. And I wanna work closely with Shomaran and uh, Babu and uh, Abu and the new board to make sure that we get the budget right for 2021 um, so that we have a good, uh, you know, a good foundation to, to build the business. And that's it, back to you. Fantastic, Steve, thanks so much. And the very fact that Steve is jumping on the budget now is again, to most of the vice point, and even big further improvement in our process in terms of us getting on it even earlier. All right, so CRM. So hopefully uh, Parvez, you online. Uh, this was um, an interesting, if I may say, thorn in our side for, for quite a while. As the board report indicated and previous AGMs indicated, we had tried to implement CRM unsuccessfully. Um, but the thing is that this is data. And it's, it's, it's scary to think there's so much data running by us that we're not capturing it. We, we tried <coughs> me, Salesforce first, but it was uh, cumbersome and just was a poor experience and it never really took. But uh, last year we switched to CRM, uh, sorry, Neon CRM. And I, I really have off and kudos to Parvez for implementing, cleaning the data and starting the analytics. Um, this was, I think, a significant effort and it seemed like just a one-liner, but the, 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 the amount of work below the tip of this iceberg, and this was a very dirty iceberg because all the data was a mess. So Parvez really worked hard to clean up our data to the point where we can now use it for analytics and trust it. And now as Mo indicated, the marketing campaigns are being run out of neon, which is great. I think Steve indicated that the tax receipts are coming out of neon, which is fantastic. And then the number he gave me was 99% on time. So that's great. And then we have a number of records um, in neon. And my assessment of the health would be smiley face. It's in good shape. I'm hoping that uh, Parvez, you're online and you can uh, maybe take a minute to make a few comments about uh, Neon CRM, please. Yes, sure, Babu. Uh, and I think uh, all I uh, everybody is referring Neon. I have seen most of his ways referring, talking about Neon. Mo also talking about Neon now. And I saw Tahmid's name. He is taking the responsibility for membership. The, I have taken uh, this responsibility in 2018, 
And initially I have started with working with Salesforce and I was getting so uh, tired on it, how to clean up and how, what to do. And uh, to, I was trying to learn the Agami working process. Then I have found Neon CRM. In 2019, we have implemented this one in 2019, June. And first challenge I have taken to generate tax receipt, import all the data to Neon in 2019 records, I did it and then generate tax receipt and then next challenge i have taken like how i can make more useful to this one and the, the way i i have tried to work out just slowly introducing this one in different different perspective i i have talked to mo and mo and if they had they worked hard to learn how to use email blast from neon and then one day i worked with faria and she is using Google uh, Google Drive to uh, uh, keep all the files like bylaws and other whatever she is using in, uh, as a reference to the website. And then I showed her how we can use the file management system in Neon. And she has started uh, using the file management system in Neon too. And in Neon, uh, whatever file we are using our website or email or newsletter if anyone clicking if anyone is trying to download from website we are getting the data analysis how many people clicked how many people these are the things i'm getting also in here and the time i have introduced uh, uh, tahmid get introduced to taking the responsibility for membership and more already referenced here right now he is working how we can improve like welcoming letter and others so right now neon is not only controlled by me there is multiple people is taking the responsibility in multiple features so this way i am trying to uh, making more useful in neon crm and right now i am just taking only the data analysis part how i can uh, collect all the data from multiple multiple sources and steven already referenced these sources here so i'm working on it thank you Babu. thank you so much Parvez. and you can see Parvez alluded to how neon has become the crm tool has become a foundational aspect of Agami and our operations as it should be. Okay, uh, let me see the next page. So uh, KB, obviously, as you know, this is a, a fantastic success story for us. Sheila will spend some more time talking about it. It's just kind of cool to note that it grew from an initial one-on-one -on -one meeting with Sal, to be, oh, sorry, Salman Khan, to becoming a cornerstone of Agami. So this is a now fully self-sufficient program funded by donor directed funds. I'm gonna say smiley face, good shape. And Sheila will talk about KB a little bit later. So I'll, I'll hold up on that. School program. Uh, this is again, has been run by uh, Tanzim and Sarah for my full tenure. And I'm really proud about this program. It's done a, it's done a wonderful job of um, solidifying all of the processes, you can see the experience growing in the team, the implementation, the, the quality of execution. So it is really this is one of those great examples where the process is getting better and better. We're just now, now into execution mode. And like most of I said, there's always room for improvement, but still I'll give this one a smiley face, half, uh, good shape. And I believe Sarah or Tanzim will talk a little bit more uh, later about the school program in some more detail. So I'll move on. Operations. So this was led by Foriba and Sadia. And uh, the nice thing about an organization that's working relatively well is that it doesn't need a whole lot of big adjustments. You know, we in the beginning, we had a fair amount of process adjustments, um, especially around security. And then Foriba did a really good job of addressing a web hack we had. Um, she's also driven with Sadia consistent format email addresses, controlled access to the Google Drive, overall web support, and like I said, security. The rating I gave for here is the average shape. And the reason being is that while we've been in good maintenance mode, I think Hassan might touch upon this thing. The next big thing Agami has to look at is scaling. And that's why operations, I think, will be a, um, in the limelight going forward. And I don't, I don't think we're yet ready to scale. So it's going to be obviously some focus on ops to help us scale up. Okay, fundraising. 
uh, it's an interesting situation because we had dedicated fundraising leadership at the beginning of my tenure, but then that person had to step down. And initially, we were all worried about it. The board was, and I were just thinking, what do we do? Because we do have a hole from a leadership point of view. But the interesting thing is that in that vacuum of leadership, the whole team stepped in. And like Mo was saying, we have now support from the, the market team, the ops team, from ASEC, ANEC. So from every corner of Agami, the fundraising effort has been, has been maintained. And you can see for the last three years, these are the numbers I got from Stephen, the funds raised were about 160, 260, 240K. And this year, we're already at 225K. And we haven't even done our YEFR yet. And I'm sure there are some more events being planned. So this is good. Again, we have to scale up and really X factor the growth. But from an overall health point of view, I'd say good shape, smiley face. Okay, <clears throat> grants. This has uh, been a, 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 a hole for us. We don't have ownership here. It's, I think we all know, it's a huge opportunity that is untapped. And we just haven't had the focus, the time, the bandwidth to get into grants. Uh, we are, and we are getting some grants, but in terms of a concerted team driving that, we don't have that. So I would say the health is in poor shape. There have been some individuals on the team, like uh, KB, going out getting grants. But if we can backfill this effort, and I, I would ask that the new board help with this, this would be marvelous. So the grants effort needs to grow. Okay, chapters. I won't spend much time here. I will let the chapter leads speak to their slides. So we have two healthy chapters, one group, Carolinas, being led by Merin. I'm going to ask Tassin and Iftikar to speak to ANEC and ASEC respectively. My, my, my rating of the chapters would be basically average, not because the chapters are doing poorly, but because as the board has indicated, we need more growth. And I believe the chapters are a critical part to Agami's growth, not just to spreading our, our, our message outwards, but also to bring in new, new blood, new thoughts, new, new leadership. So that's why I think our, our health rating is only average here. Um, there's a lot of untapped potential in chapters. So at this point, uh, Tassin, if you would, please, let's, uh, if you can talk to the ANEC page, um, hopefully maybe only a couple of minutes. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Bhai. Um So uh, September of 2019, um, uh, I think September 29th, uh, we took over. Uh, uh, myself uh, as the president of ANEC, and then we have uh, Shamsul Sadi, uh, we have Munira Sharmin, we have Fariha Choudhury, we have Muzaffar uh, Nosha Rahman, uh, and uh, we also have uh, Omar Haidar, um, uh, who, who is basically part of uh, ANEC. And uh, beginning of the 2020, we decided on some goals, uh, and then we, we, we decided that we're going to ag aggressively pursue. So one of the goal was that we wanted to break a 16K net fundraising challenge. And, and I'm very happy and very proud to say that uh, as of today, we almost raised more than 30K. Uh, and this is net fundraising. Uh, out of that 17K is from New Jersey alone. Uh, 7,000 is from uh, New York. And we also have worldwide reach uh, from ANEC connection. And we collected about 6K of the cut. Um, uh, people donated to us. Um, and then uh, we also wanted to increase the membership. Um, before 2019, uh, we only have few members uh, from ANEC. Our goal was to uh, increase that to 20. Uh, we didn't reach our goal, but uh, I'm very happy to report that we got about 16 members. Uh, you know, out of those uh, members, like nine from New Jersey, uh, five from uh, New York uh, and uh, one from Massachusetts, two from uh, Canada and so on. Um, so we did a get fantastic job uh, getting people interested in Agami that they became member. Um, and then uh, from chapters, we also wanted to expand our role. Like we wanted to help 
Agami uh, overall uh, functions and projects. Uh, so we wanted to pursue uh, dedicated fundraising to support specific program. And from get-go, we wanted to support the AEF library project, expansion project, and the health for education program. And, and uh, we, we wanted to raise uh, funds for those two programs, and, and we did. Uh, and uh, it's pending board approval, whether going forward, uh, we can continue to support these uh, programs or not. Um, we also wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we establish a very strong foothold in New Jersey. Uh, and as I said, we raised 17K in 2020. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, we are working with uh, a lot of the New Jersey-based Bangladeshi organization, uh, BANJ, BSNJ, uh, and, and, and so on. And uh, nine members are from New Jersey alone. And, and the growth strategy is also to uh, put a uh, permanent presence in New York. Uh, in that goal, we established four member uh, New York group. Uh, Muzaffar and Nosher is uh, leading that. Um, we raised 7K during the pandemic from New, uh, New York. We also made good connection with a New York-based uh, Bangladeshi student organization. They attended and they actually did fundraising uh, for us through a virtual concert. Um, and, and we do have some members uh, who are helping us uh, from uh, BSA. Um, the other area we wanted to build is uh, reach out to the corporate. Uh, and uh, build some relationship and and get a regular donation from them. So we wanted to create a sponsorship relation. Uh, we targeted five. Uh, we got two: uh, Axiom uh, Healthcare and uh, First Light uh, Cloud Exchange. We still have three more to go uh, as a as, as a target for this year. And work is uh, you know we we are working on it. Um, and uh, then um, other, another option we, we wanted to do to pursue is uh, grant writing. And Babu, I mentioned that we don't have a owner for grant writing and, and we are struggling, uh, we need help. Uh, we haven't had the opportunity to really find someone who can help uh, with grant writing. Uh, so again, uh, this is a hole for us, uh, definitely a big opportunity and we need to focus on that. And uh, overall, Agami Impact, what we did from uh, ANEC, uh, you know, we led uh, the COVID-19 campaign uh, that raised about uh, 100K worldwide. Uh, from ANEC member, Fariha Choudhury is also leading the Agami web development. And uh, social media lead uh, from the marketing team is Muzaffar is also an Agami uh, ANEC member. Uh, and then from uh, ANEC, we're also helping with the newsletter marketing team. Um, and uh, so that's basically our uh, contribution to Agami's uh, goal and mission from ANEC. And it was a fantastic uh, year. Uh, and I really like to thank all of the ANEC executive members, including the volunteers and donors, uh, to help us become uh, successful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tassin. And I wanted to give a shout out to Tassin and, and the, the team, the ANEC team, because ANEC had been very active for a number of years, and just due to multiplicity of factors, uh, they had subsided for a while, but uh, seeing brought it back with a storm. So again, thank you so much, and it's now a vibrant, dynamic chapter. Okay, so uh, ASEC, uh, if the car, if you're online, please be great if you could talk a few minutes, maybe two minutes, please, on this slide. Sure thing, by the way, thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody, this is uh, Iftekar Chaudhary. I am the uh, ASEC president. Um, for <laughs> this this junior, um, so I, I want to actually touch base on a couple of uh, the, the points over here. The first one is obviously the break of uh, uh, on on the fundraising side. Uh, we actually had uh, a, a goal of ten thousand uh, to to raise for this year. Whenever I took um, the leadership in in back in January from from us and you know uh, Afsan Bai, uh, we actually had a very good year for ESSEC last year. We had a, a good um, fundraising event with with Fuad and friends. We had a lot of visibility into the uh, community, a lot of exposure, and it was it was a truly a good event in terms of um, both kind of uh, you know like you know entertainment as well as the fundraising. So whenever we planned for this year back in January, we had another uh, similar kind of event planned with uh, some of the other goals already uh, kind of decided. But obviously after that, uh, COVID nineteen happened and. Uh, 
truth be told, I actually, it actually got me a bit worried because obviously uh, those kind of uh, cultural kind of event, those are uh, sort of our way of fundraising uh, in, in this uh, DMV area. Uh, but I'm just glad that I have a, you know, a superstar team, um, you know, with me over here in, in Essex. They actually came up with a brilliant idea of, uh, you know, hosting an all virtual fundraising event. And, and, and kudos to the team on, on every single step. They actually kind of uh, guided me. Uh, they have uh, do their research uh, and uh, they came up with the whole platform, uh, all the kind of uh, other logistics. And uh, what we came up with was, uh, you know, our first, you know, like first ever in terms of uh, Agami's, um, you know, like history, we actually had our, um, you know, fundraising event. It was all virtual and it was a very uh, successful event, uh, to be honest. Uh, we raised about uh, seven thousand uh, um, dollars, and 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 continue to raise after that, and 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 thanks to uh, the Agami leadership as well as uh, Tasin Bai uh, for kind of like you know leading that uh, COVID nineteen effort. So we kind of uh, reached back to our donors uh, and uh, all all the uh, well wishers, and we kind of uh, provided them with the update that you know how COVID nineteen is impacting the Bangladesh and the uh, you know education of, of our students. And while the schools are closed, that doesn't mean that Agami is actually like, you know, sitting idle, not doing anything. It's, um, they are actually, you know, uh, doing the relief efforts and all the other, you know, good stuff that they are doing. So thank you very much uh, for that. But uh, it, it was actually, um, you know, working in our favor as well uh, in reaching. Um, in terms of uh, the membership, uh, since we had a very good year last year and uh, continue to have a good year in this year. So obviously it, it kind of, uh, uh, created a stir in the community and people wanted to kind of uh, know about Agami, know about ASIC, what they exactly do and I uh, know how to kind of uh, join the team and do uh, different kind of a volunteer kind of efforts. So we raised our membership from seven from last year to 14 for this year. So that's a hundred percent uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, like uh, increment on the uh, membership on the level and still we have quite a bit of time so we are still looking for more members to join so hopefully uh, we'll, we'll get to our goal of uh, 20 members uh, by the end of the year other than that uh, one other item i would i wanted to touch base was uh, the agami impact so before that um I, I knew that you know like there are some people that we would be kind of a uh, uh, working with, uh, you know, uh, how we, we said that, you know, Central, uh, the Agami, uh, the Cal Cal you know, California team uh, here and there, but not, you know, to that level. But but definitely, I would say, ESSEC has been one of the, uh, into the forefront of, uh, you know, working with the, working on several different fronts, several different teams, uh, leading them even. We have a superstar uh, like Tamid, who's actually leading the uh, membership front. Uh, we have a rock star like Parvis Pai, who's, who's leading the uh, analytics front. And we have a powerhouse. Uh, we'll actually have that in my home. But yeah, we, we, fortunately, we have that for Agami as well, uh, for Hannah Zaman Mo. So she's actually leading the marketing front. Um, I'm, I'm helping uh, helping as much as I can on, on, um, you know, on, on that front as well. So I know that like, you know, several of the folks are helping uh, uh, key, some of the key kind of uh, easy initiatives for Agami, which is uh, a truly an uh, outstanding factor. And, and I know that, you know, uh, several of the ENIC members are also part of that. So that's been a very, very welcoming change in terms of uh, chapter strategy, I would say. And that's been a very, uh, you know, effective uh, and, you know, I would say like, you know, it, it's kudos to the whole Agami leadership as well as the chapters and, and, and all the members. Uh, and Overall, it's been a fantastic year, uh, although uh, the COVID-19 has hit us very badly and, um, you know, like uh, several, we have lost so many folks and people are impacted in, in all sorts of uh, areas, but, but still, it's great to have a great team under uh, me and, you know, uh, great to be part of that team. Thank you so much, Yitik. I really appreciate that. And I think you know, it speaks to a really interesting point where there was a philosophy where we can have chapters siloed but recognizing that we had such limited resources this is about a year plus ago that's why i was pushing for more of this shall i say a mesh network and i think it's I, i'm really happy with it i think it's fantastic that it keeps all the chapters engaged in all of agami and we really truly are even though there are these chapters they never become siloed so i think i'm really happy with that so thank you so much at the current Tassim, for your leadership and support of that vision. Okay, um, going forward. So a quick page on AEF. Um, I'm going to ask Misa to provide more detail. 
but essentially for most of you know, um, Agami Education Foundation is our reliable, trusted, uh, trusted sister organization in Bangladesh. And uh, they've just, they have such an amazing organization for feet on the ground. Um, tremendous input and effort in multiple areas. Again, working very close to so many of the Agami members on the COVID-19 relief effort, the response effort, all the fundraisers, the videos were amazing, Shomiran, the local uh, domestic NGO application process, the office relocation. So really a great shout out to um, the AEF team, Shomiran, the GM, Nafisapa, and the overall team. Uh, I believe Nisar has a few slides, I think, to talk to. So Nisar, if you want to jump into this point, this would be good. Or I can finish my deck if you want, Nisar, and you can come back, which you prefer. Why don't you finish it, um, your deck? You take up one or two more pages. Thank you, Nisar. Okay, so <clears throat> that was a, this is the last page. And so you, you got a sense essentially of where Agami is from the EC point of view, the, the execution point of view. And as you can see, I gave, in my opinion, a lot of smiley faces. There were some sad faces, not too many. But, and it's interesting because there is, I think, very good congruence and alignment between what I'm seeing as the biggest challenge going forward and what the board, outgoing board, and Hassan Bay specifically mentioned, and to me, is scaling. Uh, we need to develop our people pipeline. Uh, we're working on it, but that pipeline mean, goes from the volunteers all the way to leadership. We need to document and improve processes if, if, if possible. Um, Hassan Bay also talked about this, or maybe Musa the leadership and culture development in AEF. It's still a growing organization that's obviously not as old as Agami, and there still is room for improvement. And I know Shomar is on the forefront of basically pushing for that cultural transformation. We need to continue to work on better communication and transparency across Agami. I know my, myself, I think I could have done a better, I should have done a better job in communicating updates and whatnot to the Agami family in general. So that's hopefully going forward. The next president will take that on. Um, long range plans. Again, this dovetails perfectly with what Hassan was saying. We're quite good at the tactical work, but the long range, one, three, five, 10 year plans, we just have been too busy to look at those, but we have to get to those. That's gonna guide us um, going forward. Obviously the foreign NGO status, deeper analytics, uh, chapter growth I mentioned, and grants. So this is sort of a, a menu, a recipe for the new EC going forward. And I, I know that the new board, Tassim, Mosulai, Hassan Rai, are all great in terms of process and, and discipline and growth. So I look forward to a lot of fantastic opportunities and growth for Agami going forward. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. Thank you, Babu. Uh, I am going to transition to a presentation that I uh, I was I was um, requested to share. Uh, hopefully, you can see it. Um, I, I didn't know Shamiran is going to join us today. Otherwise, uh, Shamiran could have presented it, but. Um, um, I, I will go ahead and present it. This is basically one of the things, I mean, AEF is, is our, our uh, face on the ground. Uh, whatever Agami does, it it's, gets done by AEF. So without AEF, we couldn't have done as much of work as we are doing in Bangladesh, whether it's KAB, whether it's um, school program or anything else we do in Bangladesh. It's all by AF, and there's a great team that's working in Dhaka to execute all our vision, our work, and you know, obviously spend our money for the right, right, uh, right work. Uh, well, Nafisa uh, suggested that um, I present this particular program overview, which is teachers training, um, which uh, she actually leads in AEF. Um, and this, this program has, was started in 2016, has done 
fab, fascinating work uh, training the teachers because teachers need to be as good as they can be to uh, educate the kids that we support. Okay, so she has taken up. Sorry, Babu. Can you put us in presentation mode? Oh, sure. Thank you, sir. Um, sorry about that. Um, so she uh, she took up the um, idea of training the teachers, um, and and she took it on in 2016. And she slowly, the program started to evolve and grow. They they taught teachers uh, how to teach math, how to teach English, how to teach science, so on and so forth. And um, as it was growing, suddenly pandemic hit us, right? And But the training program didn't stop there. They continued to train teachers uh, through virtual training. And they not only trained teachers, they also started developing some content, online content uh, for, for this purpose. And I believe they have um, been in touch with uh, a government entity uh, in a a to i where they are putting together a virtual uh training platform where different organizations can submit their training videos and anybody can access those training videos and and get help uh this is a pretty busy slide i'm not going to go into detail uh, you are all free to um, get a copy of this from from the uh, Google Drive, but this basically goes into details of how this training is done um, and what are the benefits and how it's being uh, executed with the teachers and who are benefiting from it. Um, and um, basically that's that sort of thing. Um, last slide on this is, um, there's a lot of good things has happened through this training program. Um, uh, many, many teachers have been trained, 75 teachers from nine different school. Even the headmasters or head teachers have been trained to, on, on how to run a school, how to, how to take care of a school. Um, there's a lot of, lot of things have been provided uh, from, from AEF to help the teachers help the help the training program and there are obviously some challenges uh, challenges meaning that you know teachers uh, because these are schools that are under uh, support under privilege and not funded enough teachers have different varying level of uh, knowledge and skills and that causes some issue in in the training and they are sometimes not motivated enough because they are not uh, they are not highly paid. Um, so that's that's another issue. Uh, sometimes the there is nothing available to this to these remote schools uh, from government or the other sources. And there are sometimes even the teachers are shy in taking online classes, right? Uh, we know uh, some of us who have experience working in Bangladesh, we know how it goes. Um, and, 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 and more, I mean, they're, they're hesitant in using technology, they're hesitant in using a computer because they feel like they may get exposed, uh, their, their lack of skill may get exposed uh, to others. Uh, so these are really, really serious barriers and, and, and this program is doing a fantastic job in overcoming these barriers and helping the teachers. Um, so one of the things they have, um, AEF have, uh, has told us that uh, they need really more funding to, to scale this training program up and provide more benefits. So that's something for the new board and the new executive team to consider and see where this program should go, how far it should go, and how you know how well it should it should run. So that's something to look forward to. So I am gonna 
uh, that that's basically it from Nafisa. Oh, I see Nafisa is here. So I don't know if Nafisa, if you want to add anything uh, in a minute or so. No, thank you. I'm not sure you are now uh, presenting this. Just now I joined. Oh, okay. And sorry, we... sorry. No, no worries. I, I just finished uh, presenting your teacher's training slides. Do you have anything to uh, quickly go over? More, you know, uh, beyond this uh, presentation, we have generated 33 smartphones and laptops, projectors in projectors in one of schools and projector in one school and laptops in all school those haven't any laptop uh, and we are engaging our students now in our online teaching class four students in science english and maths so all four, class four students of primary school uh, will attend gradually in on online uh, teaching simulation teaching uh, is our goal now and we are uh, you now I, we are promoting a science group in Chatpara Ideal Academy and we are looking closely that group every day we are they started class in this lockdown situ situation and then doing um, classes regular classes uh, with there are not so many uh, students in this group only nine group uh, nine students are uh, in science group that uh, were uh, maxi maximum is girls they are very bright students then we are trying to empower empowering them uh, is our target and we are doing good with students when we add our uh, students in simulation classes uh, that improves a lot and we'll continue this with our teachers and with good teachers we'll make uh, a youtube channel A good teachers uh, will record will recorded a simulation sessions will record those in and will uh, what I'm saying I tell how I tell that's all okay thank thank you Nafisa that that was a um, some some information that I I. Uh, I didn't mention. I'm glad you you did. So, thank you so much. I'm gonna move on to the next agenda item, um, which is uh, let's see where is my agenda. So that's uh, KB report by Dilruba Choudhury. Dilruba, uh, if you are there, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Nisar Bhai. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, let me see. Uh, share screen. Let me try to do that. Okay. Um, can you see my screen now? Yeah, we're good. Go okay. ahead. Let's... Okay. All right. Let's let me get started. Uh, so I'll be talking about uh, Khan Academy Bangla program, as Nisar Bhai mentioned. Um, so Khan Academy Bangla is essentially Agami's education technology uh, program. Uh, it's still called Khan Academy Bangla because that was our initial platform. Um, we have since then added a number of other items. Uh, so I will go through all of them. Um, so first I want to talk about uh, what we did this year, especially in support of the pandemic. 
So the first item, portfolio item uh, we have is called Amar Ghare Amar School. It's actually a government initiative that the Ministry of Education um, took to address the education gap caused by the uh, school closures because of the pandemic. It's essentially uh, for grades six to 10 students. And um, these are video classes that are broadcast on Shankshad Bangladesh television. Uh, we were invited in July to participate in this program by Startup Bangladesh Limited, which is a part of ICT ministry or ICT division. And uh, along with a few other organizations, um, we were tasked to create 600 video classes for broadcast. So we started the work and from Agami, we are doing approximately 100 classes. We have already completed 80 plus classes which have been broadcasted. And um, the expected revenue from this uh, project is uh, 26K dollars. Uh, the team that is working on this includes the KAB team, uh, including myself. Uh, we have eight members, and we also recruited six temp resources um, to work on this project. So this current phase of the project is expected to wrap up by the end of this year. And we have already been notified of the next phase, which is a much bigger project. And I will go over that in my next slide. The next uh, portfolio item we have is, um, is based on Colibri, um, which is actually an offline platform. And it's Agami's offline platform that we are collaborating with Learning Equality on. This is where um, any content that we produce, uh, we put there. Khan Academy Bangla content is also part of it. Uh, essentially, any open source content can be added uh, into Colibri. Um, so for the last couple of years, all the work that we have done in different schools um, have been offline and have been based on Colibri. So this year when the pandemic hit, um, we uh, thought about uh, what we can do with this. And one of the things we did very quickly was to actually uh, transform this into an online platform, uh, which um, it's just a demo platform that we are hosting uh, on our office server. Um, it was an idea that we had ourselves, but eventually we learned that, uh, we learned from um, Learning Equality, uh, the, the organization which uh, develops Calibri, that um, other organizations, including other governments are also doing the same. For example, the government in Uganda with uh, assistance from UNICEF actually did exactly the same thing. They put their Calibri offline platform uh, online and that was kind of their government initiative to support um, distance learning during the pandemic. Um, so, that's the, that, so that's part of what we did uh, for pandemic support. Um, and in fact, uh, this is the demo uh, platform that we actually initially took to the government um, uh, in order to get further support from them. And instead of this, actually, um, it evolved into Amar Ghare Amar School, and the government asked us to participate in that uh, project instead. So that's how it kind of, uh, from this, it led to the other one. And finally, we have uh, Khan Academy Bangla, our original uh, platform, um, which has been, which we released um, several years ago. And what we did this year, again, for pandemic support, um, first of all, Khan Academy was very um, at the forefront of, you know, tackling this, especially in the US and also in other uh, countries where uh, especially online education is much more uh, accessible. Uh, in Bangladesh, we were not really able to do much um, for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, the access of online education, uh, there's lack of that. And also the other reason is Khan Academy Bangla does not necessarily have the content aligned uh, with the Bangladesh curriculum. Uh, however, they did provide us um, a very timely uh, tool um, 
this year where we where we are able to actually create courses ourselves but based on the content available on Khan Academy Bangla. So very quickly um, uh, in um, April to June, what we did is we created uh, six new courses on Khan Academy Bangla, which is completely aligned with NCTB math curriculum. So if you now go into uh, Khan Academy Bangla, you will actually see those six courses uh, at the top, and then you will see the other uh, courses that are available through Khan Academy. So that's kind of the uh, scope of the work uh, that we undertook this year, essentially to support uh, uh, pandemic um, challenges. Uh, prior to that, uh, we started the year with you know, our original plan where we wanted to um, continue implementation and we did um, a training for the primary schools where they were using Calibri we were getting ready to do another training uh, for secondary schools in March, uh, but all of that activity essentially stopped um, after, um, after March with the school closures. And we moved on to these, all these activities that I just mentioned. Next, I want to talk about uh, going forward, what are the different opportunities uh, available for all of these um, portfolios. So for Amar Kore Amar School, as I just mentioned, um, we have been uh, informed and invited uh, to participate in the next phase of this project, which is, which is for again for grade six to ten, uh, but five thousand videos, um, more or less, uh, which would cover the whole curriculum, all subjects for these these grades. So from Agami, we are, um, and again, these are all kind of after. The bullet points that I have listed after that is kind of all very premature and part of our internal planning. Um, so we are targeting um, at least 1,000 videos, um, and that would be at a projected revenue of uh, about a quarter million dollars. And this would be um, the workload uh, would essentially, it's essentially will be two to three times of our current capacity and it would require expansion of studio, office space. Uh, we have done some initial homework and anticipate a cost of up to 12K might be required for that. And the expected start date is January of next year. Um, so in light of all of that, um, if we are to take part in, in uh, this next phase, one of the things we have thought about is um, so what is the impact of all of this work that the government is doing or expects to do? Uh, so some sort of impact study maybe uh, is something that probably needs to be undertaken by someone. It could be us or it could be somebody else. So I just wanted to put that in there. Um, as part of the government initiative, uh, the, another parallel project is for grades 11 to 12, which haven't started yet. Um, and then uh, the last item I uh, show here is uh, for primary education for grades one to five. Uh, what we know so far is that a similar project um, is ongoing uh, or uh, it has been ongoing, but it may be expanded or the next phase may be started. And it's going to be done by uh, Channel I, which is, um, which is a TV channel, and they also have their own production um, company. So this, we just had this idea since we have done a lot of work on uh, primary um, education, especially with math. Um, if we can approach Channel I and maybe uh, ask for a collaboration where we do some of these videos uh, for them. So this would be for primary education. Um, I don't know if we have any contacts there or not. This is just a thought that, uh, that we had, that there may be some opportunity there. Okay, moving on. As far as the Agami content package on Colibri, um, again, any kind of direct work that we want to do with the schools, whether that requires offline or online, uh, could be through this platform. And uh, the new thing is the Calibri app, which is going to be released early 2021. So that's some, and that will also have uh, offline capability. 
So that's something that we can leverage to bring um, the content to our schools and our students. Uh, maybe look at uh, blended learning setups. Um, we can also look at providing device and our connectivity support uh, to schools. So there is a big scope of uh, work that can be done there, along with actual content creation. And last but not least is Khan Academy Bangla. Now that there is uh, more appetite for online education in Bangladesh, um, we can consider developing Khan Academy Bangla with uh, fully NCTB aligned content. That will of course require um, further engagement with Khan Academy. I mean, that's the model that many of many countries or other languages, many other languages have followed where they have developed um, Khan Academy uh, further in their languages. Uh, this of course will require further funding. We have had some very informal um, discussions with USAID in Bangladesh, and it's our understanding that they are looking for, uh, for an education project that they can support. They have looked at a few other things which have not quite met their uh, criteria and Khan Academy Bangla might be something that they'll be interested in. Uh, what they have advised us to essentially go through um, Khan Academy, Sal Khan and USAID here in the US um, to facilitate that. So that's something that is again, you know, we can uh, explore um, if we decide to do further development of Khan Academy Bangla. So that's what I have as far as, you know, future possibilities. And I think I have one last slide where based on all of that, uh, just a few recommendations on, you know, where we can go from here, um, especially uh, for the incoming BOD and the pre new president. Um, let's first decide, you know, what our vision and long-term goals are for Agami's EduTech program, align with the AEF towards a common vision and goals. Uh, of course, set up the required infrastructure for success. And finally, uh, funding plan aligned with that vision and goals. So um, thank you. I think that's all I have. Thank you all. Nice work, Sheila. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Dilruba. Um, I think the next item is uh, school program. So, uh, Tanzim or Sarah, who is presenting the school program? Whoever is, go ahead, take it away and, and go ahead with your presentation. I think it's going to be me this time. Okay, share screen. Mm. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. I'm still new to Zoom, so pardon me if I'm making any mistakes. So yeah, I think uh, most of you guys are aware of school program one way or the other. Uh, we feel privileged that there's a lot of work that goes around Agami which pretty much centers around the school program because at the end, it's all about the kids and how we can make their future better. And I really uh, want to thank from both of us to the marketing committee, fundraising committee, uh, grant committee, the whole backend program and everyone basically thank you for doing this because at the end, all the stuff that you guys do help us to do whatever we try to do better. Uh, so in terms of school program, generally the most of the stuff that we are responsible for is essentially uh, supporting all of the schools in terms of both monetary as well as uh, um, guidance throughout the year, how they can run their school better and how we can essentially make sure that our agenda and our uh, purpose is served by the schools and because this is a lot of humans and a lot of different types of people involved uh, thank god uh, we have very good team in aef uh, both under uh, uh, basically with the direct support from shomiron and especially nine uh, 
uh, Mr. Naim, they are essentially our eyes and feet on the ground in Bangladesh. And because of their hard work, it has been much, much better for us to do our job than how it started maybe even four or five years back. Um, so currently, this is really our schools. I have listed them in three different slides, but just going to quickly give a summary. I don't plan to go over each of these schools. If you guys want, I can, but I think uh, it would be a repetition of the same data for a lot of the existing school. I might spend a little bit more time for the new schools and some of the other initiative. If you guys want to talk about in specific school, please do let me know. Uh, so we started with uh, basically few schools this year and then from each of these schools we generally the way the process works essentially at the end of this year uh, end of the last year essentially every school that start submits their request for the upcoming year and uh, basically based on that along with AEF recommendation and our own judgment we select certain schools to continue as part of our program and we essentially ask some of the schools to drop off uh, sometimes permanently, sometimes temporarily for certain measures and based on also new requests, we add additional re new requests in, uh, in terms of uh, support. So some of the schools, Agami Parshala, this is the remote school in Sajay Kragamati, pretty good program for us to be involved. Uh, a few challenges mostly because of the remote area, it's the monitoring for the school and building a very trusted relationship with the school is a little hard. Uh, then we have Alok and ex Alok program, which is like an after school scholarship, uh, secondary, higher secondary support program. This is a donor directed program. Then we have uh, Chatpara. Uh, this is a high school in Silet area doing very good for us. The results have been pretty well. Um, also, they have been an active member for a few of our activities. Uh, Doshagram High School, another high school in Silet area. Then this Loki Pushi Mantobajar in Jinaida area, very, very poor area. The school is also in a very, very weak state when we started. It has been a little bit more stable at this point, but a lot of work needs to be done for them. Then we have two PhD school, Nandipara and Piarabad. Pretty decent uh, support from Shivnath Sharkar, who is the so, director of PhD for these schools. And then we have Shohag Shopnodhara, again, a school in Dhaka, but this school is supported by us along with few other uh, NGOs uh, around the world. And then we have Shopnodhara, this is in the uh, Chittagong area, in the port area, mostly supporting the uh, um, indigenous people in the Chittagong tribal region. Uh, over, uh, then basically we selected three new schools, uh, four new schools actually, actually three new schools and other re-engagement. So uh, Empyrean High School, again, um, situated in Adabar, Muhammadpur area. This is uh, supporting some of the slum children, especially from the, uh, the Bihari camp in Muhammadpur, uh, the Geneva camp uh, that is called. Uh, there's also the Solaiman Mostafa Sriti High School, another school in Kumila area. Uh, this is our, another new school that we started engaging on and already we see a good uh, relationship with this school. Uh, Switch Bidda Niketan, another school started by a couple of volunteers in uh, Mohammedpur area again. Uh, also good school. We are heavily engaged with this school already for various different program. We also have Faisun Nessa Fames, as we call it in short. Uh, this has been a school that we have been engaged for three years previously, and now we are re-engaging back. This was a donor-directed program before, and continually it will also be a donor-directed program. Uh, we disengaged with three schools in 2020. One was Bangladesh Mohila Shamiti School. Uh, we feel like the school has good amount of support from BMS, which is a very strong institution. 
the infrastructure and the classroom support is very good actually probably it has one of the best infrastructure from all of our schools however compared to the support that it has we see that the number of students that it supports is pretty small especially as it goes into the higher classes the retention for the kids are not that high so we decided not to be part of the school uh, starting this year Shuredhara Patshala, this was a short amount of, uh, we, I think we engaged with them for three years, uh, very small student number 30. This is a alternative kind of a school where kids from after school used to come to the school, learn music and a lot of different mu uh, life skills through music. Uh, we don't feel that our money is justified for 30 students uh, for such a big organization, so we disengaged. Shreyang also was another donor directed high school and we engaged them for almost four years, uh, five years actually. Yeah. Uh, and basically it was a donor directed program where um, mostly the donor supported funding bunch of construction projects for the school, mostly to build toilets and science labs and stuff like that. So given that the need of those construction is done, we decided to disengage. So overall, including all of this stuff, we support almost around 3,000 uh, kids across all of these schools. Uh, 1,300 of them being boys, about 1,600 of them being girls. And not only schools, as you have heard in terms of teachers training and KAB, a big part of our school program is the teachers. And we support almost 110 teachers uh, in all those 13 schools and I would say we touch a large number of people either through teaching or through sorry either being the teachers or be them being students of our schools and their families as well so that's kind of where all your hard work goes into play uh, 2020 budget again I don't want to bore you guys with the numbers Overall, essentially, these are the schools that are getting um, funded by our program. And I marked them some colors. So the grays are essentially for the donor directed programs. Blues are for the new schools and the white is for existing schools. Overall, again, uh, about $120,000 that we spent on the school program including both donor directed program as well as uh, funding from RM directly for different schools. Uh, and to give you guys about an idea, I think we have increased in the last three years from 85 to 99 to 120. So there's a very good healthy uh, increasement as you guys are raising more fund, we always find a way to spend that money on the kids. Uh, so challenges, I think, um, um, yeah, some of the challenges that we are trying to address are mostly related how we can get better data for all of this funding to be justified. And most of these challenges that we are putting down over here are kind of all trying to fill that same void. Now, uh, some of this stuff we started last to last year we had some plans but COVID this year threw some of those plans uh, and they, they're pushed out essentially we still plan to execute them and hopefully with AEF support we will be able to execute it better in 2020. Uh, one our idea is to essentially come up with some standardized test data so one thing we have already collected is we have very good data for all the JCC and TSC exam which is the primary school exam and the junior certificate exam so that essentially gives us very good uh, uh, standardized method of, okay, how many teachers, students are appearing those tests, how is their results, we can kind of have an idea how many students and what kind of results they're putting up with. Uh, so our idea is to have similar kind of tests, especially for some basic course, like maybe Bengali math or English, uh, and essentially have kind of that data which allows us to monitor the students progress 
obviously each of the schools has their own tests and their test results and stuff like that but we wanted to come up with a standardized test from Agami itself so as I said it was a goal for 2020 but due to COVID we are uh, pushing it out to the next year uh, school monitoring plan so same thing we increase monitoring from one per year to three per year this year unfortunately for COVID it got again completely off the track uh, but I think uh, we have a very good team now that can execute this uh, at the rate that we want because we were collaborating this with other teams like KAB and other uh, organ, uh, or, or teams inside AEF uh, so idea is essentially we want to get a collaborative plan that both the teachers and the school authority agrees so that we can get the data on student assessment, teacher evaluation and schools compliance on the basically on our policy as well as the fund transparency. So again, I think the first part is having that school monitor in on ground so that they are able to have that relationship, go talk and all that. Again, Naim, Mr. Naim has been critical for this. He has very good data from a lot of the school which allowed us to kind of come up with some of the pressure point and some of the troubling points that we have for each of these schools. And we did try to talk and work with a couple of these schools. I would say a few of them got resolved. Few of them was uh, promised that it will be resolved and they say it has been resolved, but until we essentially go back and actually check it, we don't know. So I think this will be an ongoing work and ongoing process, but once we basically have the uh, data collection process going, we will be able to basically feel a lot more comfortable about each of the schools and the students as well as the teacher. Uh, so this is another, I would say a long-term project again trying to lean into some of the strength that we have inside Agami so basically try to come up with a way that we can integrate the KB program into our school so that each of our schools and their students are essentially getting trained through KAB and essentially uh, use the KB strength to enhance their school educa um, student education as well as teachers training and also get better assessment of the students because KB is, has all this stuff built into it. So this is an ongoing uh, long-term project. I think we will be doing better this for the next few years. Some of these in some limited format has been implemented and basically when we talk about this the homeroom project we can essentially kind of give you guys a glimpse of how we ex plan to expand this for the entire 3000 students so uh, homeroom project is essentially was our response to covid uh, again thanks to shilapa and sarah who has been driving this mostly from here and then again rifat uh, naim bhai I forgot another person's name. I was not fully involved. So I uh, maybe one of you guys can add. So they were really, really uh, instrumental in pushing this every week. They have been working on this and I think it was a good success. So what the idea was essentially since we are closing down all the schools, how does it help? us and how can we essentially make sure that all this good work that we have been doing is completely not lost because some of the challenge that we face is essentially once a student is away from school for certain times the whole normalization of coming to school doing school work homework all that stuff is gone because most of the time they are now busy with something else and unfortunately most of them are sometimes busy with earning some extra money for their family. Uh, if you don't keep them engaged, it is very hard. And once a student is lost in that uh, part of the world, it is very hard to get him or her back. So we basically said, okay, we use remote learning, but obviously remote learning as we see in Zoom and is not applicable for there. So we look for some low tech alternative and essentially we identified some of the pilot program schools to basically come to us 
go through some teachers training and go through certain amount of uh, uh, I would say worksheet based education. So we started this three pilot schools, Chhatpara, Lokhipur, Shivanto Bajar and Alok. So if you see very three different school, one is a high school in Silet area, Lokhipur, another primary school in Jinaida and another Alok, which is essentially Dhaka based school. Uh, so basically we wanted to give them worksheet weekly. Um, they two, three, four students work together talk with their teachers over cell phone. Most of them does not have a cell phone. So they, what they do is they manage with maybe three, four, five students together, form a group and talk to their uh, homeroom teacher through the phone to know, okay, this is what I'm getting problem with and then communicate, okay, when is the next worksheet going to be available? And then this way, basically we kept on moving the cycles between online and offline kind of a train teaching and curriculum. Uh, one thing the team really did good is essentially they not only just push this, they have a lot of data based on uh, how did the students received it. So we did a lot of survey for the teachers, the students, what are they facing difficulty in, what are the things that we can do better. Uh, so all these data are coming in and these are kind of like, as you can see, this tree is essentially a training ground for us as well as our team to essentially get us into that mode of giving uh, uh, school work and then getting feedback from the students and the teachers that how is it working from them. Uh, this is a little bit different than how generally education works in Bangladesh. So we have obviously had a lot of challenges, but again, I think thanks to Srila Pasaya, they have really been pushing this. And again, thanks to the team in uh, Dhaka, I think uh, it went pretty well. Oh, that's it. So I'm done. Thank, thank you, Sanjim. That that was a fantastic uh, presentation. One thing I would like to highlight, um, and and I am not the person to know enough detail to highlight this, but I still feel like I need to highlight the again the great work that's being done in Dhaka. The people, starting with Nafisa Shomiran. And you have heard few names like Naim uh, on the KB side, Rabbi, and many, many other people in the Dhaka AAF office. They are really doing fabulous job. They're, they're just amazing. I had been involved in the homeroom project at the very beginning just to provide the support from the board. And I was amazed how how Naim and and Rifat took the ownership and ran with it, and came up with new ideas, came up with fantastic, you know, templates, these and that, and and that's just mind blowing. So I think we have a great team over there. Obviously, we have a fantastic team here. Uh, in U.S. And, and these two teams working together is what Agami is all about. And we need to keep this going, keep this growing, and, and we have a fascinating future for Agami. With that, I would like to say that all our presentations are done. So, but we actually, I'm we ran over time, that's not a problem. I'm glad that most people are still here. So it's time for some question and answers. I would like to suggest just to get, do it in a very organized way. If you would not mind raising your hands. Uh, and I, if you don't know how to raise hands, it's in the participant list, you should have a way to raise your hands. Um, and or, or if you feel like just unmute yourself and, and ask your question or put your question in the chat box. I'll be monitoring and I'll be 
I'll try to get to uh, each of you um, in, in, in sequence. I see Tamid, you have raised your hand, Tamid. Go ahead, please. Uh, Kamrul Bhai probably raised his hand. Oh, Kamrul Bhai is uh, before you. Okay, Kamrul yeah. Bhai, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, sorry about that. Go ahead, Kamrul Bhai. Unmute yourself. Oh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Ami, I'm uh, brand new over here. Um, I want to thank you. Thanks, Shabir and uh, Tashin for inviting me to join. Actually, we talked yesterday. And this is one of my love, really. I love what you guys are doing. And one of the school that actually you have listed here, Switch uh, Bidhaniketan. Actually, this was a school. I was in Bangladesh, actually, from 2014 to 2019 on a project. And I happened to uh, run into these kids, two, uh, two kids, that they, they were doing some other work. and they we talked and they are interested in building a school. And they said, sir, we don't have any money, nothing to do. So I said, no problem. As far as financing, we'll go ahead and do it. And we started with 17 kids. Now I saw your list, we have about 160 kids. And that was an amazing thing that, you know, these volunteers, they're, they're all volunteers. And they did this fantastic work and I, um, I have visited that school several times and what really fascinates me is I have a school in my village that we started a long time back. When I compared these two schools, like what the kids in my village, fifth grade kids knows in my village, the kid in this school in Muhammadpur, like grade one kids is better than the fifth grade kids in my village. So that's the difference between the teaching that you know these volunteers do and I, I really appreciate you guys also financing them a little bit. Uh, so I just want to uh, tell you that my involvement with this school, and actually I, my family paid for uh, purchasing a land for this school. So we paid, I think, you know, whatever amount they purchased the land. Uh, so that's number one. I just wanted to mention that to you. The other thing I wanted to mention is uh, you guys are trying for approval for NGO in Bangladesh, I guess, that's local NGO, right? Uh, <laughs> so it's it's basically two NGO application, local NGO for AAF, which is the sister organization in Dhaka, and then hmm. we'll be applying for foreign NGO directly for Agami. Okay, as, as far as local NGO, uh, I don't know uh, at what, uh, where are you in this application process, but uh, I have friends, uh, people that I know uh, uh, that could probably you know, expedite these things. So if somebody could give me some information where, who, what department or what ministry this has to go to, I might be able to just you know, try and expedite or help you guys with this process, okay? And I really, I really loved whatever you guys did presentation. That's tremendous work, it's just unbelievable work that we can do for our kids in Bangladesh. These are poor kids and uh, that's really great work. Okay, thank you. Th thank you, Kamru Bhai. I think um, Tassin, if, you, if I, I understand that you are in touch with Tassin and Tassin is basically helping the, the domestic NGO or coordinating the efforts okay. from here on our side so he can give you more detail on that. Okay, great, great, great. Uh, I'll um, send you all the details, Kamru Bhai. <laughs> Next, uh, I guess, Tamid. Uh, Please, sir. Thank you so much. Um, so, I would like to ask a question. Before I ask the question, I'll probably give uh, provide the context of the question. So, um, first of all, like I'm really excited today um, to see all the people here and to see such a strong team where everyone is really um, eager to help each other out, and they are so much excited to appreciate each other. This this is the best part about the meeting today that I loved. Everyone is appreciating other uh, for all the good work that everyone has been done. This is tremendous. Thank you so much for like uh, being so good. I highly appreciate it. Um, so the first thing is like, um, I started working uh, for the centralized Agami projects um, recently. Not It has not been so long. 
and truly speaking this is the first agm that uh, i'm attending um so after i started working in the centralized uh, centralized projects i kind of felt something like from my personal experience um so to me i kind of feel like um engagement is the key factor for um development and for success like um, babu bhai um, mustafa is there you guys already said that our goal is not just to make members but to engage them into different projects and eventually put them into leadership position and that's what it should be um so um what i have seen that there is uh, a slight disconnect uh, between or among the centralized centralized projects and the chapters so when i was in chapter i actually i was missing out the broader picture the bigger picture of what's happening what agami is doing what what are the capabilities within the agami but once i joined the uh, started working into the centralized projects then i have seen a lot like there are like so many good words there are like so many good stuffs happening around but i was missing them out when i was in uh, the chapter because we mostly concentrate on chapter dependent or chapter related work so is there any plan um to engage the chapters more into centralized centralized projects so they get to know more and they feel more excited and you know um probably contribute more babu do you want to tackle that sure. question sure i can give me a second i can definitely talk a little bit about that so to me good question it it dovetails a little bit with what i was saying towards the end of my discussion where i've been trying to create this this mesh network where resources are pulled upon from all parts of agami I mean, not just us canada but across the world literally like uh, on the last fundraiser af was a huge part of the, the collateral extremely valuable the point is that what i'm trying to do is pull in resources from every chapter every corner so that those people become the the windows to what agami is doing to the chapter that's one but i would argue that it's also incumbent upon the chapter president to sync up and get that and have it convey that vision to the team so it maybe speaks to what i was saying more communication but maybe more communication has to come from the president all the presidents basically there maybe the maybe what we're getting to is there needs to be a president's meeting where we have clear communication of what's going on that vision gets um pushed down more more frequently oh well, thank you so much um, it actually makes sense um so let's say like i was involved and i would like to provide like all the um success to moapu she actually got me involved and like i really appreciate her like involving me that's how actually i got to know so now we need like more leaders like moapu um who can like uh, you know involve more people and you know um engage them into different projects which can lead us to success yeah thank exactly. you yeah i think uh, that's that's a that's a great point uh, and and i think we are all here listening to that and we'll definitely keep on working on on that front um the next question i believe babu your hand is raised yeah thanks nisha so nisha i was wondering if maybe the new board could speak a little bit to everyone in the agm about the timing sequence around selection of the next ec president ec building and so on good question uh mustafiz bhai if you are there i would like to direct this question to you if you can unmute and answer this question yes yeah, so, nisar can you uh, yes yeah, so, sorry can you repeat the question please yeah sure the question from babu was that uh, what happens next in in the process now that we have the new board basically when and how the next ec gets formed because that's i believe that is the next next uh, responsibility or the most immediate responsibility for the new board yeah yeah i i i think as the, and all of you know nisar babu all of you know the the process is 
uh, the first uh, the, fir the 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 responsibility of the board is to uh, is to nominate and appoint uh, uh, the president, right? And uh, and then as the president the president then goes off and uh, will present an uh, executive committee EC. Uh, particularly the leaders of the EC. It doesn't have to be fully, uh, fully formed, but whatever is available, a lot of them probably usually has been historically continuing members, people unless they have constraints because there's so much energy right now going on. Uh, good energy, good vibes. So as soon as the EC is formed, obviously, uh, you know, then, then you're off and running. Uh, however, I think uh, until that is formed, the current uh, current president and the current EC will continue to function, but we hope that we can, uh, as soon as the president, we can get to that very quickly, then uh, then uh, that would be, and that's already on our agenda for Tassin, myself, and Hassan to uh, uh, to form, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, nominate a president very quickly uh, or select a president very quickly. Uh, with respect to agendas, I think many of the top, uh, yeah, I know, the top issues, both uh, longer term strategic and tactical, many of those have been discussed, I think, in the various presentations. Uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously the NGO applications, uh, those will have to be done. And uh, some of the items related to uh, what, uh, you know, school program will, of course, go on and some of the ideas, how to integrate the KB stuff. But more uh, like uh, what Sheila presented, right? We need to determine, okay, what are we willing to chew? How much do we want, plan to invest? And uh, what is the timeline and how does it help the overall goal? Remember, overall goal of providing quality education or access to quality education for the truly underprivileged children of Bangladesh and in a, in a holistic manner. So I think that's our goal. So I, I don't know if I've uh, you know, gone too, too long, but uh, that, and I, and I hope I answered, or I att attempted to answer uh, the question that was asked, uh, but if not, I'm happy to clarify. Babu, are you, uh, are you good with the answer or do you have any follow-up? No, that, that's good. Essentially, the point that, again, not so much for me, but for the wider audience that the process is that probably as most of indicated, P1 is, identify a new president already on the agenda and then things keep moving. Yeah, so uh, from my experience on the board, uh, I know that the board, uh, the new board will be working away probably uh, very, very quickly to find the new president. Uh, and when that happens, when they uh, find somebody to take on the president's role, uh, they will, uh, uh, they will inform the general membership that this is our new president and new president is then going, going to go off and form the new AC. I want to go All to right. Hawaii. Yeah, go ahead. I said, I want to go to Hawaii, so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you, um, um, you can go to Hawaii, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, Agami is here, so you don't, you can't go off to Hawaii and go there, uh, stay no. there, right? You have to come back. Uh, la, I, th I see another hand raised, which is, I think, from Parvez. Go ahead, Parvez. Yeah, my question is, uh, in our, most of the marketing, uh, or whenever we are giving any presentation, I have seen so many data we are showing for Khan Academy and uh, like COVID also, uh, this data I have seen, and in COVID I have seen Tassin Bai was leading so nicely. He is communicating. There is so much activities uh, I have seen from the AEF, but school program there is less number of activities in our marketing we are showing to our uh, audience. Basically, uh, in uh, last hour, uh, in our last fundraising event, I have seen. Sarah was referencing only one girl, like Mahzabin or something, this girl's name. Uh, that kind of uh, this that kind of presentation is appealing to people. Basically, as a donor, I want to know, I, I'm sending money, I'm donating some uh, uh, students, 
and Agami is working last 18 years and we are not able to show how many girls, how many kids, how many students are uh, crossing the high school area and what are the development they are doing uh, by getting uh, donation from Agami. So that kind of activities I'm, I have not seen much in our presentation, in our marketing. So school program is the primary uh, program in our Agami activities. So what can we address that kind of issues? Very good question, Purvis. Um, Sarah or Tanzim, do you want to um, do you want to respond to that? I can add later on after after you, your response if, if there is anything I can add to it. Tanzim, Sarah, Tanzim. Mr. Right. Go ahead. Can, can you repeat the question? I just heard half of it. So the question is that um, for, for a, from a marketing perspective, um, I think uh, Parvez was uh, hoping that there would be more information about the school program in the marketing packages because that is our bread and butter program and, and people donate for uh, those kids who are directly benefiting. So how can we show more a result uh, from the school program for, that, for marketing purposes. Yeah, so that part. So essentially, see, we have a lot of data. I mean, obviously, we can have a lot more data and a lot more. Uh, I would say we have enough data from the last two, three years for us to have a good start with it. Um, as I said, we have results showing JSC, PSC exams over the last three to five years. We have pretty much results for every student in their year and exams. We have uh, pictures, videos of all the school visits. Um, we have uh, good summary and strength and weakness for each of the school. Uh, I have a, we created a PowerPoint presentation beginning or end of last year, which actually we presented to the team, which we again can share, which has pretty much in-depth information about every school, what do they do? What do they do good with? So we can share those information with maybe starting with uh, the um, marketing team and then extending it to the Facebook or I mean the website team, whoever is in charge of that. Uh, we have all of the data again in Google Drive itself. So Tanjim bhai, I want to add little more specification in here. Like school-wise showing data is not basically as a donor what I want to see. We are supporting 3000 kids every year. Out of 3000 kids, how many kids has completed their uh, uh, fifth grade and how many kids is completed 10th grade by getting support? We are not only supporting by money, we are motivating them to continue their education. So are we tracking that kind of record? Like uh, one example is uh, Sarah was giving example, a, one girl, she uh, studied at Agami school program and now she is doing much good. So basically we want to know, not only seeing one girl, 18 years record we have, at least we need 10, 15 students who we, Agami has changed their lives. So that kind of materials. So Barbara's Pai, I think you're you're talking um, more about anecdotal evidence, right? Yes. So I think we can give you a lot of anecdotal evidence besides, you know, besides the PSC results, besides, I mean, of course we have the information on how many fifth grade or how many first through fifth graders we started out with, how many ended up finishing the 10th grade. We have all those numbers, the quantifiable evidence, but we also have a lot of anecdotal. That's I think what Tanji was talking about. Like we have a lot of stories. We have a lot of, we've been following some of these kids throughout their whole education career, right? So we, for marketing purposes, probably anecdotal evidence is much better in terms of, you know, getting to the emotion of it all. So definitely we have that information as well. Okay, sure. So I think Mo also hearing that. So I think she will use your data. Well, we have yeah, 
10, 20 plus such stories. And we basically said, I just picked two that was the most uh, appealing to us. But yeah, we can share a lot more videos, pictures, stories, presentations for many different schools, for many, many, different, schools, for many different schools. Yeah, I, I just want to add quickly that, um, you know, school program, the first several years, the focus was to just support the schools, just keep these kids learning. Now the school program has moved into the next phase of collecting lots of data, tracking students and all that that's happening. And what it needs to be, and basically for marketing purposes, mostly what we need to do is we need to look at that data and make them uh, palatable, make them sellable, make them uh, attractive to donors, right? That's, that's what needs to happen now. And I'm sure if the school program leaders and the marketing leaders, they work together, they can find a lot of good nuggets in there to to uh, to provide to our donors so that's that's something uh, i'm sure tanzim and sarah will will pay attention and hopefully mo will also connect to sarah and tanzim and they will make it happen okay um i don't see any more hands raised so I'm just going to add this by that basically if uh, marketing team even has any specific request that we want a story like that or we want a case like that, please do just write us that do you guys have such any template even and we will try to look around and fill up that and basically send you guys, hey, here's a story of whatever kids going through. For example, we have students who started in Alok school in their uh, elementary school, I mean, in kindergarten, and they are actually now graduated from college. And one of them is actually studying medicine. Another is studying in a university. We have stories from them. We have one student who actually graduated from Alok and now came back and is now teaching in Alok again. So there are a lot of interesting stories, videos of them talking about this stuff is all of that is in the Google Drive as well. So go ahead and ask what you guys need and we will definitely share all that with you and then also one other thing that i want to just add really quickly is that not only do we have stories from the students but we have stories as uh, nesar bhai said we you know we're kind of evolving into a, not only basic education we're evolving into you know making sure our education system has a lot more than the basic education so we also have um, a lot of stories from the community as well as from the teachers, you know, whether teachers training, whether it's teachers training or teaching in a different way, things like that. We have a lot of information. I mean, our AEF team has done a phenomenal job in making sure they acquired and um, have all that data in the Google Drive. So yeah, definitely we should probably get together and try to highlight those stories and those instances because they're not anomalies, you know, they're they're very, very, very much the norm. That's the, that's the amazing part of it. Yeah, uh, no, that's so, great. So, sorry, go ahead. Uh, Somebody sorry, to jump, sorry to jump in um, there. So a quick question or a quick uh, uh, suggestion. Uh, if we have any centralized document or something which uh, actually uh, explains all the success stories that we have, so um, I was trying to make something for the uh, membership package. I was trying to get some information from the website of all the success stories that we put in the website, uh, trying to put them all together and put it in the membership package. So when somebody joins, they already, uh, are, he or she already knows uh, what are the success stories of Agami. If we have more success stories, which are like a newer version and which are better, it would be great to like create a centralized uh, document which we can add to the membership package as well. Uh, that might be a good idea. Yeah, great, great suggestion. And I, I would suggest, Amit and uh, Mo, you guys get in touch with Sarah and Tanzim and, and get the latest, uh, greatest stories that we you guys can add to the uh, membership package. Thank you, just, sir. Just, can I... just directly connect. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Mustafa. Yeah, yeah, no, finish. Uh, I just wanted to put one something for in perspective for everyone. 
uh, that these are promotional material and we need to do all of that to be able to attract members, volunteers, donors, all of that stuff. But we should not lose sight of the fundamental stuff. Remember, these are kids in really, really underprivileged kids. They're living in their situations are dire, right? The fact that these kids are, go, are learning, they're becoming literate so that they don't have to rely on someone else to sign their stuff, names, or even to read a document, et cetera. This should not be lost on and the fundamental, the very basic stuff that you know, thousands of kids every year are be being literate and they will stay literate with access to good quality education. They would have learned tablets. They would have learned internet. They're learning so much stuff. So of course we have to do a lot of these other things, but we should never lose sight of the fact that fundamentally, how it is changing and trend. This already changing and transforming their lives, even if they don't go on to become doctors or lawyers or, or teachers, okay? So I think that's something, and, and by the way, when I, I know I, when I talk to a lot of these people, that you, I, it really drives home the point. And that's something that I all want that at the end, we should never lose sight of that. Of course, we should strive to do all of these other things and we always will. But in reality, the fundamental stuff is they are becoming literate. That's a huge thing. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great, great point, uh, Mosta Izwe. And as, as Agami members and volunteers, uh, we should all keep that in mind. Anytime we talk to somebody uh, or introduce Agami to somebody, that's the fundamental thing that we should mention that we are, we are we're, we're making people literate so that this person can read a newspaper and, and understand what's going on in the country. This person can read a document, legal document and sign and know what, what he or she is signing on to. So, exactly. So I'll leave it at that. Um, did, uh, Sabir Bhai, did you have a question? Um, yeah, sort of. Like okay, go ahead, please. We have almost uh, three hours now. Very good. Well done. Good AGM. Probably unique one compared to the last 17 years in terms of maturity, in terms of content and quality for overall operation and congratulations. Now, my question is, do you have, are going to make it available, a recorded version of the AGM so everybody can watch it, whoever missed it, or if we want to go back and find out some of the information? Can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So it, it is being recorded. Um, and I will also save all the um, uh, chat window comments and all that as a separate file. But it's being recorded and it will get uh, saved away. And um, we will let people know where they can access this recorded file. Right. Thank you. And uh, follow up comments, not a question, is. For all those activities, profiles, success stories, marketing materials, uh, we have kind of developed Agami newsletter, we call it Agami News now, published quarterly, and all of you are welcome to write, express, and promote anything you do through Agami News quarterly. It's more dynamic than anything else in terms of marketing in our space in the world. So take advantage of it. That would be my request to everybody globally. Yes, that's a great plug for the Agami News. Um, I know Savirbhai have requested and the Agami News team have requested me to write every now and then. Some, sometimes I was able to provide it. Sometimes I was, I was lazy. I didn't do my job. But uh, yes, please, please write for Agami News uh, and so, Magami News team will come to your doorstep, knock on your door and ask for articles and, and items. When they do, try to help them uh, as much as you can. And if you think you have an idea, you have an uh, item to write about, go ahead and do that and send it to the Agami News team. All right, uh, as uh, Sabir Bhai pointed out very, very gently that <laughs> we have spent three hours. 
but it was worth it. Uh, it was worth it. I'm, I'm glad that uh, we had uh, all these folks on the AGM today. And uh, the work never stops. I, as as uh, somebody mentioned, I think Mo mentioned, the next action item is uh, going to be our YEFR and the budget work. Um, so no rest for the EC, whether you're outgoing or incoming, <laughs> you are you are working away. So please uh, do keep up the good work. Um, I would like to conclude the meeting today unless somebody has any burning question that uh, he or she must ask at this point. No, just thank you, Nisar, for a very well run AGM. I think like Sabavai said, the level of professionalism and polish is just we're setting new bars every day. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention something the other day. Uh, I think the Hassan Bhai, I think Hassan Bhai mentioned somewhere in an email or something that the our fundraiser was so successful that other organizations are asking us, hey, how did you do that? How did you do such a flawless, professionally produced uh, online fundraiser? So. Agami is definitely setting the bar very high for others to follow. So thank you all. Uh, one, one last opportunity to raise your question. So Nisarbhai, this is Tassin. Um, it's not a question, just a comment uh, and a follow up to uh, Tamid's uh, observation and uh, request is that uh, one of the thing we need to look at is Agami is an action group. Uh, so what that means is that empower yourself, go get it, do it. Don't wait on others to provide you the information. If you have that cavalier attitude, I think that is what Agami needs. Uh, so if you need information about uh, kids, um, you know, don't wait, just go ask AEF, uh, get in touch with Shomiron, get in touch with uh, Naeem. They are the school uh, in our eyes and fits on the ground, as uh, Tanzim mentioned. Uh, and then um, a lot of the schools have Facebook pages, for example, Switch, and they are promoting some of the students. Uh, so I think um, it, it would really help uh, if we all, you know, uh, being a part of an action group means uh, we go do it. We need execution, and and that would be something. I would highly um, uh, recommend, um, you know, all of us, if we can just go and do it, you know, don't wait for others. Yeah, and I just want to add to that, uh, Tassin's comment. Tassin is a prime example of taking that ownership, empowerment, and get go get it. So you can follow Tassin wherever, how, however long you want to follow him, or go above and beyond him. And Agami's door is always open for anybody, everybody. It does not matter you are here for 17 years or one year. So keep that in perspective. Well said. Well said. Can I just well say said, one? Yes, Kamrul Bhai, I see your hand yeah. raised. So I was going to yeah, come just, to you. Go I just, ahead. Since, since I'm new and I don't have much uh, knowledge about what you guys do, but I just wanted to find out how do I become a member? <laughs> <laughs> Tamid, Tamid, there you go. There you go, Tamid. Somebody is knocking on your door. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So, so like, as you said, action group, you reach out to Kamal Bhai. Let's get that done. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, by, the way, by the way, Kamal Bhai, that information is in the website. Just take it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, uh, Sabir, I didn't have time to uh, go and look at the website yet. So, I, I definitely well, will. A, a, a successful AGM, right? We recruited a new member. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. And one thing, one thing, one comment for maybe membership team, please. You may want to clarify what's the differentiation or distinction between a volunteer and member. Not much, except you pay fifty dollar per year and have the all other privileges to vote and become a leader. That's the only difference. Otherwise, there is no other difference, unless I'm mistaken. Priyad. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly right. Sorry, Bhai is right. Uh, the, the membership means you pay a nominal fee uh, and you get some rights. Uh, on one, of the, one of the main rights is the voting rights uh, and becoming, uh, stepping into a leadership role. Yeah. All right, no more hand raised. I am not going to allow any more hands to be raised. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you, everyone. And Nafisa, Shomiran, I really, really appreciate you guys uh, you know, joining this meeting because you, I didn't expect you to join this meeting. So this, uh, this shows how dedicated you folks are over there in, in Dhaka. Thank you so much. Uh, I will conclude this meeting. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful whatever weekend is left for you and, <laughs> and a wonderful week ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Excellent yeah, job. Excellent job. Bye. Thanks, Nasser Pai. Bye. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Pai. Thank you, Nafisa. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bye. 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 Very good. Very good. Thank you. Farana, you are still hanging out there. I see. Bye.